NFC Tech football. We got some OVC football on ES Cast Booth. He's Mike Lehman. What's up, Mike? How's it going? I'm Dylan Vizzano. Golden Eagles playing host to Lindenwood. Mike, this is a Lindenwood team. They're 6-2 first season as a Division One program. They've won four in a row. Pretty solid club we're going to see today. Yeah, it's a red-hot team, red-hot offense. They like to score points. They like to put them up on the board. We're going to see if they can do that again today. You look at the Golden Eagles as far as they are concerned. How about the win last Saturday against Eastern Illinois? Down 17-3 to at halftime. Mike Tech outscored the Panthers 17-0 in the second half. Yeah, they just did a spectacular job of sticking with it that halftime. They had a field goal block, return for a touchdown. Massive momentum and point swing that could have really changed the outlook of that game. Golden Eagles didn't give it a second thought, turned it around, turned it into a win. Well, my question to you is, are you ready for the keys to the game? I'm absolutely. Let's get it. He's ready. I'm ready. Let's show you those keys to the game. That is brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. Designate before you celebrate because fans don't let fans drive drunk. Mike Lindenwood, they come into this game last in the OVC in rushing defense. Tennessee Tech might have success on the ground today. Yeah, you know, Tennessee Tech has a very veteran running back in David Dayday -Day Giss, local Cookville product. He's actually on the cover of today's program, homecoming. Great day for him to go out there. He had a season-high 99 rushing yards last week at Eastern Illinois. But, Dylan, we know that he's capable of a lot more than that. He's had very good success in his career. Well, this is a Lindenwood team offensively. That's the story for the Lions. They love to throw the ball all over the place. Statistically speaking, this really is one of the better teams FCS-wise passing the football. Yeah, it's, it's kind of tough if you're a Lindenwood fan because you can't find any of those rankings – in the NCAA, they are a transitioning school, so they're not eligible to be ranked in any of the statistical rankings or the top 25 this season. So they they have a lot of guys who are right up there. And then as you can see, wind's going to be a factor today, Dylan. This ball flies off the tee. We're getting ready for this opening kickoff. Yeah, it's an overcast day. There is a threat of rain. I know we got some rain earlier, but the biggest thing, we are under a wind advisory in Cookville today. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of, it kind of started picking up yesterday. I know we were out working the OVC soccer championships, and the wind was kind of rough, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays a factor today. 69 degrees at kickoff. Spencer Red watches it go into and out of the end zone. The Lions will start this game at the 25-yard line. Golden Eagles, 2-6 and six overall, got their first OVC win of the season. We mentioned comeback nod at EIU. Down 17-3 to three at the break. Tech scored 17 unanswered defensively, Mike. They held the Panthers in the second half to just 105 yards of total offense. Yeah, just a remarkable job for a defense that had kind of been struggling a little bit to find their footing. I think they may have found it last week. It'll be interesting to see how they handle such a talented quarterback. Speaking of talented quarterbacks, that's right on cue. Cade Brister's first pass complete. The connection to Peyton Rose right at midfield. Yeah, and there's no surprise his first target is going to be Peyton Rose. Just had a monster game against William Jewell last week. Nine catches, 200 yards, three touchdowns, and he's just the most accomplished receiver to ever shoot up for the Lions. The six-foot senior, we're looking at the Lions' starting lineup. He got a lot of all-conference talent during their days in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. The first run, a successful run, continuing to push the pile. That's the 5'8 junior, Andrew Martin. Yeah, if you're a Tech fan, this might be a little weird for you to see a guy named Andrew Martin down on the field. You know, we had uh, the Golden Eagles had Drew Martin as a backup quarterback the last few seasons, so kind of a weird thing to see out there. Fourth in the conference with 493 rushing yards coming in. Golden Eagles defensively, of course, Josh Relaford, a preseason all-conference player. Pass by Brister. The reception is made. Impressive catch by Smith. That ball was thrown slightly behind him. Yeah, a really nice catch. An even better job of keeping his footing. He slipped there. I think the, the turf is still a little slick from that little, I don't even want to call it a rain dust, maybe a rain dusting. Just a little bit of a sprinkle here, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes before the game. So kind of lost his footing, was able to keep it and get an extra couple yards. The aforementioned Relaford on the stop. First pass by Brister to Rose went for 25. The last one, Smith. Ended up being a first down and dropped in the backfield goes Andrew Martin. 
on a very nice defensive play by A.J. Crawford. Yeah, Crawford sniffed that one out immediately. No chance. Honestly, just very lucky to get the handoff done cleanly. But then just a really nice play by Crawford to, to snuff that one out and put one in for a loss column. This Lindenwood team ranks second in the OVC, 12th in the nation, averaging over 37 points per game. They've won four in a row. Tech bringing pressure. Brister airs it out. It'll go incomplete. Smith, the intended receiver, Christian Watson, the nearest Golden Eagle defender. Yeah, maybe a little miscommunication on what the route was supposed to be there. Brister threw that one a lot deeper than I think uh, Smith was intending, and he almost looked like he turned the wrong way. He's probably supposed to fade that one out towards the, at the sideline, so a little miscommunication, so you're going to have a third and long, and we'll, we'll see what the offense has in store. Lindenwood team converting at a 46% clip on third down. We're behind the chains here. Third and 14. Just underway. Homecoming for Tennessee Tech here at Tucker Stadium. Brister. Offensive line doing a good job. Brister rolling. He's going to get sacked. Kale Dava brings him down. That, that's just good patience by Dava. Not letting him... Basically, that quarterback contained. Don't let him get outside the pocket. He had a lot of time to throw, so we need a better job by the defensive backs, by the Golden Eagles, not giving him any options, and then Dava cleans up the play. So a promising beginning with a first pass going to Peyton Rose for 25 yards. Ultimately, though, stalled. The Golden Eagles side of the field. So here's the first punt of the afternoon. That's Riley Ripper. With Quavell Thornton back, this one will end up ducking out of bounds. Tennessee Tech will have its first possession at the 17. Yeah, Dylan, that's going to be another thing to keep an eye on is the kicking game today. With a wind advisory in effect, winds blowing harshly to the north here. So when you're looking at the field, going from our right to your left, the wind is whipping to the left. So anything being kicked into the right end zone today uh, it's going to be a challenge, that, that's for certain. Well, the Golden Eagle offense, they are led by the graduate student, Jeremiah Oatesfall. Been playing since 2017, the Austin P transfer. Most recently from Memphis. First play for Tech, far side, pass is complete. Whole host of Lions going over to wrap up the receiver, that's Brad Clark. It's been good to see Bradley Clark this year stay healthy. That is a kid who's dealt with a lot of injury over the past two years, hasn't gotten to see a lot of the field, but proving this year when, he, when he's healthy and can stay on the field, he's that big target out wide that can really do a lot for the Golden Eagles. Hauled in the game-winning touchdown pass last Saturday, 6.45 to go in the fourth quarter. And that Tech win at EIU. First one went for four. Now Mitri is Fleming on an end around. He'll have enough for a first down. It gets to the 30. You're going to see a little bit of this from the Golden Eagles. They have a lot of very talented skill position players that they can bring around on those end arounds. They like to do that a lot with their receivers and some of their younger running backs who, when you look at them, you don't think running back. You think they're built more to that kind of style of play where they can slot in at slot receiver or make plays like that as a running back. So the ball situated at the 30. Golden Eagles move the chains. That's Pagis in motion. Oats fall over the middle. Another catch is made by Clark. Into Lion territory. The Golden Eagles off and running on the opening drive. I mean, Dylan, textbook pass, textbook catch. Just right on the money for both. Don't try to do too much. Secure it. Get the first down. Move on. Tempo now for Tech. Pagis, the freshman, a near side carry. Trying to force his way to the 40. Looks like he will be brought down at the 41-yard line. Pagis on the carry. You've seen the Golden Eagles going a little bit with some tempo here. Something they like to do when they can pick up a first down, they like to get up to the ball right away, try and run another play, see if they can catch the defense sleeping. It is a gain of five for the first-year Golden Eagle out of Alabaster, Alabama. Still in the backfield. Oats fall. He will end up giving it to Pegues. Pegues fighting his way for a couple of yards that will set up a third and short for Tennessee Tech. Yeah, it's looking like it's going to be about two yards to go, maybe three. Kind of hard to tell on the spot just yet, but 
This is a very interesting area of the field. With the wind, you might be able to consider a longer distance kick in, in this situation, but a lot of times this is the area of the field where you're going to feel pretty comfortable going for it on fourth down if you can't convert on third. We are at the 940 mark of the opening quarter. Tennessee Tech looking at a third down and two. Scoreless early stages. Guest in motion. Oatsfall will keep it himself and he will not get enough for the first down. Penetration from the get-go. The Lions force a fourth down. Looks like the Golden Eagles. Right now the offense is out on the field, but of course, Oatesfall has shown his capabilities to punt this season. And in fact, had one inside the five yard line last week against EIU. See if Tennessee Tech goes for it. It's looking that way. Oatesfall, all oh, the pitch to Giss. He's gonna have running room for the first. What a brilliant play call there. It kind of looked like you might hand that off at first, and so the defender comes around the side. Looks like he has an easy easy attempt there at Oatesfall, and then he just kind of flips it over to Gist. Easy first down. David Gist coming off his best game of the season at Eastern Illinois. That's the first time he's touched the football. And it is a first down. The Golden Eagles go for it on fourth down. Tennessee Tech picks it up. Fresh set of downs for the purple and gold. As we near the eight minute mark of quarter number one. Oates fall. He will hand it and goes Fleming looking to turn the corner, but the Lions are there. One of the first to greet him, Tyrone Griffin, the Indiana State transfer. Yeah, you know, Fleming looked like he was just trying to find a spot to turn the ball upfield, but great job by the Lions, not really giving him much room to work with and they'll stop him for no game. That's the second time that Fleming has carried. Griffin forced him back to the inside. Officially, they will call it a gain of one. And a second down and nine. Tech's first drive after Lindenwood was forced to punt. Again, it's Metrius Fleming. Fleming across the 30, nearing the 25-yard line that will set up third and manageable for Tennessee Tech. You know, you don't see that often where you see the same play call or something that similar to the same play call dialed up two times in a row. Looked like it was pretty successful. We're going to have another third and short. Well, the Golden Eagles unsuccessful on third down earlier, but of course got it on fourth. Fleming's third carry. Frank Caldwell able to help out on the stop. It's a third and three. Oatesfall swings it. Pagese catching. He's got a first down. Justin Pagese down to the 15-yard line. Tech moves the chains again. Yeah, when you're a defender, that is such a hard thing to do is to guard that player in motion as he comes across the field, and they're going to throw it to him immediately. Very tough to do. Good to see Trevor Stevens back healthy as the Tech left tackle. Bradley Clark, the game-winning touchdown catch last Saturday. David Gist, a season-high 99 rushing yards in the win at EIU. Six minutes left, opening quarter. On a lengthy Golden Eagle drive. Now Clark gets a carry. Whole host of Lions there. One of the first... May and Magruder. Yeah, not the cleanest play for the Golden Eagles there. Kind of looked like Oatesfall and Clark collided just a little bit on the handoff. Maybe slowed him down just enough for the defense to make a play. Darian Bolden, that's somebody you got to circle. The South Dakota transfer leads the OVC with 12 pass breakups. The leading tacklers, David Whitmore, one of four Indiana State transfers on this Lion team. Second and 10. Oatesfall stepping up. Oatesfall will run. Nice run by Jeremiah Oatesfall to set up a third and short. That's one of the things that Oatesfall does so well is he's 
you see him kind of shake his shoulders there. He's got like a, almost a slipperiness to him. Kind of made his way through that tightly grouped amount of defenders and offensive linemen. Very smart play, very heads up play by Oatsball. Yeah, that dual threat to say the least. To your point, ultimately Griffin on the stop. Oatsvall collects seven. It is a third down and three. Oatsvall throwing and it's incomplete. Jaleel Dean, the intended receiver, just past the outstretched attempt. And it is fourth down for Tennessee Tech. Yeah, you could see Oatsvall working very quickly through his progressions. Looked like he wanted to toss it out to Pegues wide right, but that, that play was covered. Attempted to make a last second that pass there to Dean just couldn't quite find him now the question is what do you do here it looks like they're gonna line up and go for it and that that'll be the call well the Golden Eagles successful on fourth down already on the drive a fourth and three Oats fall rolling throwing pass incomplete he wanted Fleming Bolden the coverage Lindenwood gets a turnover on downs yeah, that one didn't look like he got the pass off the way he wanted to. Kind of threw that off his back foot. Just not quite enough on it. Well, the Golden Eagles are stalled. Lindenwood will take over. First, we will step aside. Scoreless first quarter in Cookville. A lengthy Golden Eagle drive, but the Lindenwood defense stands tall. They force the turnover on downs. Lions will get the football back. As we take a look at the coach's profile, that's brought to you by Legends Bank. Legendary service, extraordinary people, Legends Bank. Jed Stugart in his sixth season as a head coach. All he's done is win in college football. Yeah, winning pedigree, not always the easiest thing to translate from different levels of competition, but he's been able to do just that, including in their first season in Division One. Christian Cantrell forces a stop in the backfield. Martin, the ball carrier. Lindenwood backed up. They were forced to punt on the opening drive after getting the ball into Tennessee Tech territory. And it looks like Brister will change the play at the line. Brister, he'll keep it himself. Samari Burns, the first one there. Third and long upcoming. A little read option there, but great job by the defense not to bite. Kept that contained. Didn't give him anywhere to go. Another third and long here. Burns holding his ground. That is the thing with Brister. Of course, we talk so much about his arm, but he's a good runner as well. Eight rushing touchdowns this season. Six carries for 80 rushing yards in last week's win against William Jewell. So another dual threat signal caller. All sorts of time, it's running out, and another sack. Jacorian Wren and the Golden Eagles will force a three and out. I mean, you just you can't say enough right now about the Golden Eagles secondary. That's two straight times where you're watching Brister and he has all day to throw. Look at this, just standing there, nothing. Nothing going for him, and at a certain point, the offensive line just can't do anymore. I mean, you just got to give credit to those Golden Eagle defensive backs. Tennessee Tech second sack. So late in this first quarter, the Golden Eagles an opportunity with some pretty good field position out of this. Riley Ripper punting. Quavel Thornton. This one is angled toward the Golden Eagles sideline. Does take a Lindenwood roll. And it will be down at the Lion 40-yard line. But we got some defense early on. Scoreless late first quarter. We'll step aside on ESPN+. Plus. Tennessee Tech led by the head coach, Dwayne Alexander. Of course, a Golden Eagle alumnus. Homecoming. Festive year for Tennessee Tech overall. Mike, the 100-year anniversary of Golden Eagle football. Yeah, just... Kind of like that all over the Tennessee Tech campus. As, as we speak, the all-century team for men's basketball being named as well. They're celebrating their 100th anniversary. And then Tennessee Tech baseball as well with another 100th anniversary celebration. So all kinds of great things going on on the campus of Tennessee Tech. In fact, the 
100 year anniversary of Tennessee Tech men's basketball. They are walking off the field right now. That's why we have a little bit of a delay. It's homecoming. A lot of ceremonies today at Tucker Stadium. Gotta love the pageantry. Pageantry of it all. At the 40 yard line, the Golden Eagle defense helping set up great field position for the purple and gold. Jeremiah Oatesfall. His pass going deep, Brad Clark. It is an incompletion. Again, bold in the coverage. And we are seeing why the senior cornerback is one of the best in the OVC. That was a very, very nice play by Bolden. Timed it perfectly. Just kind of got in the way. I love the play call there of trying to go deep on that first play out of the timeout. See if you can catch him napping. You have the wind behind you. Worst case scenario, throw that ball a little longer. Golden Eagles had about an eight-minute drive in the first quarter. They got it down inside the 10. But Lindenwood stopped them on a fourth down. So Tech's second drive. Again, it's an end around. This time, Willie Miller, first time he's touched it. Spun down by Griffin. Golden Eagles a lot early going with those wide receiver end arounds. Yeah, Willie Miller is such, such a weapon for the Golden Eagles. Obviously, they're starting quarterback last season. Has thrown the ball this year. He likes to go on those end arounds a lot. And he's been one of the top receivers for the Golden Eagles this season as well. So just, just a man who does a little bit of everything. It's one of Oates Falls' top targets. Tennessee Tech looking at a third down and three. JV and Allen wide open. He'll have the first down and a whole lot more. First time we've seen Allen. He comes up in the clutch. First down, Tennessee Tech. No, Allen just continues to look more and more comfortable in that running back position. Transitioning from defense, Dylan, for this season. Not something you see a lot of, especially in the collegiate level. And he'll get his first carry of the afternoon. Turn the corner. As he ends up getting nudged out of bound right, bounds right there by Man Magruder. I mean, I still remember the massive hit he had at Tennessee last season. And he's not a big dude. He's really not. He, he's, he's kind of a compact guy, but he has a lot of juice behind just that body and the way he throws it around. Makes for a great running back. 5'6", 182. Almost has kind of like that bowling ball kind of frame. Very yeah. fast, though. Not someone I'd want to be in front of. David Giss will get the carry hemmed in the backfield. The Lions defensively, Sterling Williams, the six foot three junior. Yeah, just, just a nice play there. Golden Eagles trying to catch one up the middle. Just just no no room at all to work with. Another third down chance for Tennessee Tech. They converted the third and three earlier on the drive. This is another third and three. Very well could be the final play of quarter number one. Oates fall. Looking gist. He's got the catch. He's got the touchdown. David Gist. Golden Eagles have the lead. Yeah, just a wide open. I believe that's a wheel route run by Gist there. Simple play. Simple touchdown. I mean, not much more else you can say about that play. Just ran it to perfection. Golden Eagles will strike first. Short drive. Golden Eagles go 40 yards. Giss caps it off. For the Golden Eagle running back. Big game at Eastern Illinois. That is his fourth receiving touchdown of the season. And Hayden Olsen tacks on. Or check that, it's Devin Parker. 7 0. Tennessee Tech's got the lead. We'll take a break on ESPN. Plus. First season in the Ohio Valley Conference. First season in Division I football. Lindenwood. St. Charles, Missouri. That's in the St. Louis area. Massive success in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. In fact, they were only there two years. They didn't lose a football game. They went 14-0 in two seasons in the GLVC. I, I'd say that's that's pretty good. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's what you're striving for, for, for sure. It's rare you get to do it in your only two seasons, but that's that's just called success. Division two playoffs in two straight years. They did not play in the 2020 season, opted out of that spring campaign. 
tremendous year in 2019, likewise in 2021. And they're 6-2 and two this year. They've won at Central Arkansas. That was an impressive win. They won at Houston Baptist in the season opener by one point. The only losses this year for Lindenwood, UT Martin and SEMO, the league's two undefeated, and both ranked inside the top 20 in FCS football. Yeah, those were, those were very talented veteran teams that have been at the top of the league for a few years now. So for Lindenwood, this is about as much success as you could have hoped for, I would say, and anything else that you get from this point on, it's just gravy. Well, that'll be the first carry of the afternoon by Donovan Marshall, the six-foot senior. And that will conclude the opening quarter. Lindenwood will have a second and medium when we come back. Golden Eagles lead this one 7-0, second quarter. Lindenwood, Tennessee Tech. We'll look at the quarterback comparison brought to you by Jostens. Jostens, the official recognition company of the OVC. A couple of sixth-year signal callers. Yeah, you don't see that that too often. Obviously, with COVID, you got that extra year of eligibility, and then both of these guys saw redshirt years as well. Cade Brister, one of only four quarterbacks in FCS football, averaging 300 passing yards per game. What a catch that was. Up the ladder, one-handed Donovan Marshall hangs on. That was, that was a spectacular, just as spectacular of a short catch as you will see. I mean, that, that couldn't have been more than a four or five yard gain, but just a spectacular grab. It is enough to move the chains. And they're actually going to look at this for possible targeting. Marshall, he ended up going over to the Lindenwood sideline. Looked like he took a pretty good pop. I mean, wow, what a grab that yeah. was. And I, I think the way he caught it kind of lent himself into setting himself up for a big hit like that one kind of had to pull his body back and then was kind of stumbling to the ground. And anytime you stumble, you have that extra momentum right at the end where you go flying forward and then unfortunately just kind of caught into the defender there. So it'll be interesting to see what they call. Obviously, you always have to you have to review these plays. It's, it's just for the safety of, of the athletes. The hit was by yeah. Nyquan Washington back into the Tennessee Tech starting lineup. That, th this is going to be a tough – Tough decision. It, it doesn't look like he was quite leaning with the crown of the helmet. It looks like he got him more in the back. But I can see when you see that in real time, that's one of those plays, all right, you need to take a look at it because, again, you, you just, you just got to be safe. In, in today's, today's day and age with the way the athletes are, they're so big, they're so fast. Those helmets are borderline weapons at times, and, and that's what they're trying to take out of the game is to prevent players from using them like that. So that's Drew Myers. He came back and said, no targeting. They said they were reviewing targeting, but then they, I guess, also reviewed the spot and they deemed that it was short of the first down. So when in fact, it's third and one. Lindenwood did not get a first down there. So I guess they reviewed both because they said targeting, but then they were also looking at the spot. Yeah, it's possible that they said we're going to take a look at targeting, but we're also going to do that. And he, he just happened to mention the one. It, they have a lot to do. These officials, they do such a great job with so many different jobs. Third and one. This pass is caught. It'll be a first down. Jared Rhodes, the freshman tailback. And Lindenwood is able to move the sticks. That's a veteran play by Brister there. You could tell he started eking up into the pocket and almost just awareness of where the line of scrimmage is. It almost looked like he was going to take off and try and run for it. And at the last second, wasn't quite a pitch, but it wasn't a typical throw either. Just kind of dumped it off there for the first down. Rhodes stays in the backfield. See if he'll get his first carry. No, it's Brister, the QB keeper. Nice run on first down. From behind, he's taken down by Kale Dava. I think it'll be interesting to see if Lindenwood decides to maybe try and get the ground game going a little bit. And, and try to build some play action possibility. They came out firing right away, and, and the Golden Eagles seem to be pretty much set up against that. So we'll see if they try to run the ball a little bit. Brister gets six, second and four. 
Time starting to run out. He's rolling. He's throwing. He's got a first down as that catch is made right there by the Lions. Jalen Bethany. Southeast Missouri transfer. Just another really nice job by Brister. Rolls out and uses all that time he has. He's got those legs. So the defenders can't necessarily just try it, go up and tackle him. They know he's a skilled runner. He's skilled at making people miss. So you kind of have to treat that almost like a contained situation, and that'll give him time to find the open receiver. What a nice drive, Bruin. Brister throw, catch made. That's Peyton Rose. Rose gets it inside the 10, inside the 5. They call it a touchdown. What an effort. That, that's an absolute phenomenal effort by Rose. Realizes that when he got tackled, he was still on top of the defender, so he threw those arms up right above his head. I do believe it looked like he got in the end zone cleanly. We'll take another look here. Great job of avoiding that first tackle, and then he, he just carries Nyquan Washington. Yeah, he's in. That's a touchdown. In. He carried him for six-plus yards. Just a really, really fine play. His eighth receiving touchdown of the season, his 34th of his illustrious Lindenwood career. That's the most in Lions history. Logan Seibert to try to tie the game. The Lindenwood response is a big one. Peyton Rose the touchdown, and we are all knotted up at seven. We got a good one going early on, homecoming in Cookville. We'll step aside on ESPN+. Plus. 37 yards out. Brister to Peyton Rose. The individual effort he carries Nyquan Washington would not be denied. And that ends up tying the game 7-7 second quarter. What's scary to me is, is you alluded and said that's his 34th career touchdown. That I, can you even imagine scoring 34 receiving touchdowns in, in, in your college career? I'm yeah. playing NCAA football on on PlayStation too, or two. I don't five. You know, I obviously during COVID, I spent a lot of time playing some NCAA football, and I don't even know if I did that. And thirty-four. There, there, was, a, some, there was some success there. That's that's just a big number. And he's a school leader as well. One hundred eighty catches, over thirty-one hundred receiving yards. I don't know. Safe to say, he's a Hall of Famer for Lindenwood. I mean, he's got it, you would think. So the Lions respond 7-7 after the touchback. We'll see what the Golden Eagles can do. Yeah, Dylan, if, if you – if we – we talked a little bit about this before the game, but if, if you had told me that we were going to be in the second quarter tied at 7-7, I'd have been a little surprised. You got two pretty talented offenses out here today, and so far – not a lot of fireworks just yet. We'll see if Peyton Rose has gotten them started, though. O.J. Ross, he gets his first carry. Another talented freshman moves the pile. Let's see if he has enough for a first down. Looks to be the case. Ten yards on the carry, O.J. Ross. As, as we said with Peyton Rose, there's just, there's just more evidence of just great second effort. Ross stopped there probably about two or three yards short and just kept that whole pile moving to pick up the first. And they will finally move the chains. The official on the far side is signaling. Yeah, there you see, top of the screen. There they go. Golden Eagles at the 35. We've seen Pegues, now Ross, Tennessee Tech's freshman tailbacks. Oatesfall will look to throw, and he dumps it down right to Ross on the shovel pass. Nifty little play. Down to the 40. Dylan, a very interesting play, too. I don't know if you caught that, but right before the play began, Devin Gile and Trevor Stevens switched spots on the offensive line. You had Stevens originally lined up on the right side, and he's your starting left tackle. So they both went in motion and basically put Stevens back in the right spot. That was an interesting little pre-snap scenario that we just saw. Dylan Petty, the tackle, gain of five. Another O.J. Ross carry, and O.J. Ross first down. He's into Lion territory. 
down to the 47. And now you know maybe why they did that, because they had Stevens lined up on the right side again on that exact same play. This time they leave him there, and you've got two hulking tackles out on that right side. Open up a massive hole for Ross, and he can pick up another first down. Uh, you saw Ellis Adams, the Tennessee Tech left guard, six foot four, 352 pounds. The man can move, though. That's a big dude. Coming that fast? That's that's what people don't realize how big that is until you go stand next to them in person and you just feel just I, I can't eat like a cat maybe I mean maybe that's how a cat feels Oats falls pass there's two golden eagles in the area so it falls incomplete Brad Clark around the action as well as Ezra Widelock yeah that one's kind of weird it's almost like those two routes ended before the pass got off, and then that that's unfortunately what can happen at times is when the when the routes tend to overlap at the end of those. Not sure exactly who was targeted. I want to say Clark was probably the intended target, but Widelock's route just kind of carried him out that way, and obviously you're just looking for the ball. You don't know where your other receiver is necessarily going to be, and you're going to try and make a play on it. Second and 10 at the 47-yard line. There will be a flag on the play. Oatesfall ended up keeping it himself. Might be a procedural penalty, though, on the Golden Eagles. Yeah, letting the play go off. There's a small chance it's an illegal formation. I would think probably holding, but we'll, we'll take a listen here. Drew Myers. Illegal formation. But they will decline it as Oatesfall went down for a... Looks like a loss of three. Third down and 13. We got more whistles. We're have a little conversation here. Tennessee Tech, three of five on third down. Golden Eagles scored the last time they had a football. Had the football with 11-yard touchdown catch. David Giss, fourth receiving TD of the year. He's in the backfield. Oatesfall climbing, running. Jeremiah Oatesfall leaping and lost the football. Oatesfall loses the football. Lindenwood recovers. The Lions will take over Chase Giorgi. The game's first turnover. Lions get it back. That's just tough. Uh, Oatesfall trying everything he can to stretch out and get that first down. Obviously aware of where the marker is. Kind of gets flipped in the air. And then right there at the last second, looks like the ball got punched out. Devin Edwards looks like he may have gotten his, his hand in there right there. Kind of hard to tell exactly who knocked it out, but... Great overall defensive play there by Lindenwood. Sets himself up with pretty good field position. The Lindenwood offense scored the last time they had the football. A big time run into Tech territory. First down for the freshman, Jared Rhodes. Coming off his best game as a line. In fact, he had only two carries all season prior before rushing for 90 yards on 11 attempts. Has had a nice start to this contest, sitting at 5'11 and 199 pounds. At the 48, Brister steps up, goes down. The Golden Eagles get a sack, A.J. Crawford. And that sack will go to A.J. Crawford, but that was set up by Josh Relliford coming around the end. Nearly, almost looked like he tried to knock the ball out of the hands there just couldn't quite get it out of Brister's hands but that that set it up perfectly for Crawford to come in and finish the play Golden Eagles love to blitz Josh Relliford from the secondary in fact he leads the team in tackles for loss coming into this one five and a half on the year it's pretty good for a safety really good at blitzing more pressure another sack that is the fourth sack already in this first half Ethan McLaurin yeah, some of it Some of it looks like, obviously, the, the defensive backs for the Golden Eagles are having a great time so far, just keeping coverage down there long enough. 
if I'm Brister, I I'm starting to realize I'm probably going to have to try and get rid of the ball a little bit quicker today. The Golden Eagle defensive front is just having a lot of success right now against that offensive line. Well, third and a country mile. They got to get to the 38-yard line of Tennessee Tech. They are currently at the 43-yard line. Lindenwood is. Design draw the QB keeper. So Brister will end up getting it into Golden Eagle territory. McLaurin again on the stop. And it's fourth down. Yeah, that it's 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 gonna be really close where they put that marker. Well, that's the original line of scrimmage, I'm mistaken. I was sitting here thinking, wow, he did a really good job. <laughs> that's why they have the two flags. That, that, that is you're learning. Slowly, but learning. Well, after the turnover, Tennessee Tech's defense is able to force a stop. We're going to see the Riley Ripper punt. Thornton back. Takes a bounce. Good Lindenwood roll. Let's see where this one will end up being down. Four-yard line. Ripper gets the roll. Tennessee Tech will be backed up. We will see the Golden Eagle drive when we return. 7 7 8 one second quarter. Tennessee Tech able to survive the game's first turnover after Oates Fall fumbled it. Golden Eagles get a three and out. Here's a look at the OVC standings. You got the two undefeated UT Martin in Southeast Missouri. Look, you're a smart guy. May, no, maybe. Lindenwood and EIU played. Lindenwood won in double overtime at EIU. But it didn't count for a conference game for some reason. Yeah. I think it was one of those scenarios where the decision for Lindenwood to join the conference happened kind of late as the scheduling went into effect. So it was one of those where they, they tried to fit everything into those scheduling pods as they could, but it was kind of hard to make it all work out correctly this season. So... You see that a little bit throughout the league where there's a couple of games where OVC teams are playing, but they're not counting towards the OVC standings. And unfortunately for Lindenwood, that brilliant win does not affect the OVC standings. 37-34, double OT. That was a three-yard catch by Gist on the shovel pass. This is a design quarterback run. Oatesfall diving near the first down, but he'll be just short. Third down upcoming. Other thing, you looked at that graphic, you've got UT Martin undefeated, you've got SEMO undefeated, they won't play each other this year. Yeah, which really makes for an interesting way that, that the OVC champion could be decided. It's coin flip. Coin flip. That's a first down, by they, the way, Tennessee Tech. They both finish undefeated. That uh, Chances are, if both of those teams are undefeated, though, both are going to be making yeah. the FCS playoffs, both are nationally ranked currently. You like to believe they'll both be in the playoffs. So really at this point, the coin flip would decide who's getting that first round by. As Which is pretty OBC. big. It, and, that, and that is a big thing. So you hate to see that decided by a coin flip. Chances are you won't see that too, more, too, too much more often here as they can schedule things out a little bit more ahead of time. But yes. David Giss carry. As we've learned in college athletics, you, you learn to adapt to any and every situation. If COVID-19 didn't prove that, I don't know that every, anything ever will. It's like a injured golden eagle. One of the Tennessee Tech offensive like, lines. Uh, Nason Simmons. And that's not what you want to see if you're a, if you're a Golden Eagle fan. He's been a pretty good fixture in that offensive line so far this season. He has started some games. Tech has had some injuries on the offensive line. Isaac Cross, the starting center, which forced Nate Hodnett to the center position. We get another look right there at the Gis carry. Kobe McClendon, the tackle. And it looks like they will ask for immediate timeouts. Let's take it as well. 7-7, seven, seven, your score. We are 6.22 left until intermission. 
Oh, it's a festive day, homecoming, the parade earlier in the day. You got the Golden Eagle marching band in full force. Were you on one of the floats today, Mike? No. You know, since that scenario back in 2015, they just won't let me back on there. No, that's 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 obviously a lie. <laughs> I was like, what happened no, in 2015? No scenarios. I'm just making fun of myself. No. Uh, I unfortunately did not get the ride on any of the floats, but some of those looked like they'd be fun. It looked yeah. like there was a... Almost like a DeLorean in there. That was, that was interesting. Back to the future Yeah, action. a little back to the future. Nathan Simmons, the injured Golden Eagle offensive lineman. It is a second down and long for Tennessee Tech. Oates fall hands off to Quinton Cross. Another Golden Eagle receiver gets the football. And a very nice run. Gets a first. Yeah, kind of showing why he was an all-OVC selection last season was the, the Golden Eagles' leading receiver. Hasn't seen really quite as much action this season. Um, kind of, as of late, finding his way into the rotation a little bit more. And, and as you see, Dylan, another end around by a wide receiver. Golden Eagles really doing their homework, I, I believe, going into this game. Must have seen something on the tape. And they've been working. They, they've been able to move the chains with, with runs like that. So Quentin crossed the first down. Now David Gist gets the carry. Explodes to the far side. Let's watch David Gist. He might be able to get to the end zone. He gets tripped up, stays up. He's in. Oh, what a run by David Gist. Tennessee Tech on top. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about he's 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 the hometown kid. He's the senior. So, you know everyone in those stands knows who Day-Day Gist is. That's just a phenomenal run. Great job of getting around the edge. And then just just beating out down the sideline, two defenders. Both had opportunities to maybe either get him out of bounds or slow him down just enough for people to catch up. Just a really good job of tight roping that line and knowing where he was. Over 70 yards, David Gist, his second touchdown today. Golden Eagles with the edge. And I'm going to say this without knowing it, Dylan, but I'm going to say that's a career-long run by Day Day Gist. It's a pretty safe bet. It's a pretty safe bet. Devin Parker adds the extra point. That will send us to a break in the action. David Gist, the Cookville kid. Big-time touchdown run. Golden Eagles lead it 14-7. He's from Cookville. He went to Cookville High School. His final homecoming game. David Giss, 71 yards out. The afterburner stays on his feet. What a run by David Gist. And just a great job twice of kind of tight roping and a tackle attempt, almost high stepping it. Longest run by a Golden Eagle since 2014, Radira Noor against Northern Iowa. Went for 84 yards on that play. Northern Iowa is in the, they got a dome there. The Unidome, they call it, Uni I believe, right? Short kickoff. It'll end up going out of bounds. So a Tennessee Tech penalty. Devin Parker. Remember, he is kicking into the wind right there. Smart play there by Abe Hare. Looked like for a second he was going to attempt to catch it and then realize, oh, the sideline's right there. Let's just let it go out and get a few extra yards out of it. Northern Iowa. You think of Northern Iowa, what, what player comes to mind? <laughs> you know, I can't even remember his name right now, but it, the, the running back. From yeah, yeah, I forgot about him. David oh, Johnson. Kurt Warner? Kurt Warner. Kurt yeah. Warner, Kurt yeah, Warner. that's where you were going. But yeah, David Johnson David was the Johnson first one that there. He actually was played mind. in that game against Tennessee Tech that you talked about in 2014. But Kurt, Kurt Warner, I mean. Yeah. Cade Brister, another pass completion. Lyndon Wood is able to move the chains, the connection to Kobe Smith. I don't know, Dylan, have you seen that that like Kurt Warner movie that they that they released? I believe it was this I think it was this summer. I've I heard of it. I, I didn't remember what it's called. Did you it, see it? It looks good. I have not seen it. I've heard pretty solid things though. We'll give you an update later if we see it. Is Kobe Smith, let's see, is that enough for a first down? He might be just short on a gain of nine. Back to back catches for the San Diego State transfer. Looks like they'll mark him a yard short, so we'll have a uh, really, really short third down play here. Second down play. A little bit of tempo, that pass is incomplete. Jalen Bethany, just a touch too much right there by Brister. Maybe just a smidge miscommunication too. Stopped on the route, not sure not sure that Brister was expecting him to stop. Looked like the ball was out in front of him, so 
Maybe just a little bit of miscommunication on that play. Jalen Bethany, we said the SEMO transfer. How about his only touchdown this year coming against Southeast Missouri? That would feel pretty good. That's a pretty big, big, big-time opponent to have a touchdown against this year. Former school as the carry by Jared Rhodes. That's a first down. Rhodes has been looking mighty impressive building off the big game he has against William Jewell. But a little banged up as he goes to the Lindenwood sideline. Tennessee Tech 39-yard line. The Golden Eagles leading 14-7. Here come the Lions. Brister with an opening. Let's watch the quarterback run for the first down. 29-yard line. You know, when you watch these quarterbacks, there are so many similarities. They both wear number four, and that's the most obvious and easy one. <laughs> but they're both very adept with their legs. They're not burners. They, don't, they aren't spectacularly fast. But they're very good at shifting their feet, getting around tackles, getting through blocks, finding openings. They're so skilled with that. And both are very accomplished passers as well. The over 10,000 career passing yards by Brister. The 2016 Missouri Player of the Year out of high school. He is out of O'Fallon. Trying to guide the Lions back with an incompletion. Cam Hutz in the coverage went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Peyton Rose. Yeah, not entirely sure what the plan was there. That Obviously, that ball was underthrown and maybe even a little bit towards the sideline. Maybe just just a waste. I, I mean, we talk about baseball. There's a waste pitch. Was that maybe, maybe that was a waste throw. Maybe throw it near him. Maybe he makes a great catch or can draw a penalty. But didn't look like that one was really ever intended to get to Rose. Hudson playing a lot of coverage on Rose. Let's not forget Tennessee Tech's two starters primarily at cornerback this year. Trace Danley and Jiren Gilmore are out for this game with injuries. Over the middle, there's the catch, there's the touchdown. Lindenwood, an extra point away from tying the game. Kobe Smith, he's in. We got ourselves a ball game. Well, you know, he saw his partner back there, Rose, get one earlier, and he said, nah, no, we're going we're gonna to stay tied on this team. I believe that'll give them both eight on the year. Is eight, that correct? Eight touchdowns. They've coming into the game. Also, Southeast Missouri's Ryan Flournoy. That was a three-way tie for the most TD catches in the OVC. Chat seven. Rose earlier. Smith now extra point by Seibert. And we are all squared away at 14. What a pair of weapons for Brister to work with. And, I mean, that one just easy catch and throw. Just beats his man. Looks like no help from the safeties. Probably playing up more towards a run. Easy touchdown. And we got ourselves a ball game. Those weapons. And I think that, you know, the keys to the game are really playing out that way. Tennessee Tech has had a lot of success rushing the football. David gives the 71-yard rushing touchdown. This is a Lindenwood team that gives up over 220 rushing yards per game. So we wondered how that would play out. Then on the other side, Without Trey Stanley and Jiron Gilmore, the Golden Eagles depth-wise at the cornerback positions, I mean, you're going up against Rose and Smith, two of the best in this conference. Yeah, and that's something to keep an eye out because without that depth, then you're going to run into a lot of – you're going to have to make substitutions at some point. Those, you know, those two guys can't stay out there for the entire game, so it'll be interesting to see how, how Coach Alexander kind of plays that and, and – cycles people through um so far i think that the defensive backs for the golden eagles have been pretty solid um just a couple plays here and there so far i see the wind with that kick as it was blasted out of the end zone this is it back and forth yeah tech scored first lindenwood tied it tech scored again lindenwood tied it 329 to go second quarter been a fun one on homecoming so far Absolutely. Um, not, not exactly, again, what I would have thought. I, I honestly, 14-14 like is a pretty solid score in the first half, and I'm sitting here like, where are the points? Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking we were going to see almost a repeat of, of the Tennessee Tech-Sanford game a few years ago where we saw 50-plus on both sides, and, you know, that that might be asking a bit much. Well, we never know. We have a huge second half here. 
plenty of football to be played, my friend, as that one is tipped at the line, second and ten. Very much so. Tons of football left to be played. Nearing the latter stages of this season. In fact, Lindenwood has just one game after this. It's a real nice job to tip that one at the line. Kobe McClendon. They will go home against McKendrick University. For the Golden Eagles, like Lindenwood, this is their last OVC game of the year. Next Saturday, North Alabama. And two weeks from today, right here at Tucker Stadium, NC Central comes to town. Ground game, Allen. Lindenwood holds him to a short pickup, so it'll be a third and long. It looks like the Lions will take a timeout. They're, of course, trying to get the football back with some time, especially with that high-octane offense they possess. Makes sense, especially after that second down run. So you're going to have a third and long gear themselves up. They're clearly an offense that do doesn't need a lot of time to move the football. So, And when you've got the Golden Eagles kicking into the wind right now, it, it's, it's really a no-brainer situation. You, you want to make sure that you set yourself up with good field position and still plenty of time, but it's not like you're expecting to be pinned back at the 20 if they can force a punt on this possession right here. Four seven, Tech third down today. Empty set. Three wide, top of the screen, little bunch formation, Ross in motion. The Oats fall to keep. He'll go down. Lindenwood going to get the football back. They take timeout number two. Yeah, I think he had a little bit of an opening after that initial fake, but Lindenwood closed the hole very quickly. Doesn't give him a whole lot of room to go. The fourth and eight, and I would expect you're going to do, you're going to punt here. You just, you, you can't go for it in your own territory. With that much time on the clock, it's, it's an easy call to punt the ball here. So we'll expect to see that and see if uh, Nicholas Bigelow can get the ball off and have something at least semi-decent. I mean, this is it's a borderline impossible task to, to expect your kickers to do much with the ball going south right now today. The, I mean, the wind is, wind is whipping. The wind advisory. I, I was here pretty early setting, setting some equipment up. You had... Whatever's on the track, those signs, I don't know what, what exactly you call them. I came here pretty early in the morning. Though they were not on the track. They were just in the middle of football field. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's that kind of wind. And those things aren't light. They're, they're pretty heavy. So for the, for the wind to be that potent today, it's, it's a sight. That's for sure. So it's a low liner. Smith will call a fair catch. Trying to combat the wind. Lindenwood, good field position. They will start at the 44-yard line. One timeout, tie ball game. Tennessee Tech will get the football to start half number two. Not a bad punt overall. Uh, I would think that the intention was to maybe have that ball hit the ground and bounce a little bit, but smart play by Lindenwood to get up there, call a fair catch, get it cleanly, give themselves great field position. Navigated the touchdown drive. 29-yard catch by Smith. The first play of this possession. That's Chase Lawncrete, the tight end. It's a pretty Northern good Colorado catch. transfer. Pretty good catch there. Double coverage. Good job to hold on to the ball. Second and seven, Brister eludes the rush to the near side. Brister reaches the football over. Let's see where they spot it. It'll be enough for a first down. Yeah, Hedzy play immediately had to roll out, just avoided a sack. Saw that he had enough room to get the first down. Smartly tucks it out of bounds. Keep the chains moving. Golden Eagles have already sacked Brister four times in this game. They had four sacks a season high last Saturday at EIU. Tech has been bringing pressure. And now we have a stoppage. They're going to review the previous play to line the game. 
Now we'll see what kind of a review we get here. It's going to be hard to tell. It's not like there was a tackle involved. He just kind of ran the ball out of bounds. So it really just depends on the camera angles you can get on it. I feel like a lot of times you see these plays, you, you don't see them overturned very often just because it is so hard to have conclusive evidence when, when you're talking about yard yard or line to gain and where the ball is. If, if it's not on the turf itself, it's so hard to figure that out. It'll be a first down in tech territory. It would be in tech territory regardless. They need the... The yellow line you see, that digital line. Yeah. That, that would help us, us out, too. We, we would love that. that. Although I've seen, you know, some, some broadcasters become almost too dependent on that at times. I know as a fan watching it, I can be. Didn't quite catch it. It sounded like they said that it was confirmed and it'll be a first down. And that's what it looks like. Yeah, that will be the case. So the call confirmed. We'll work on getting that yellow line, maybe. We've got a great production crew today. I mean, you got Cali's a highlighter sitting there. Hey, maybe. Just start get a little telestrator. Cali Strong directing. Josiah Jackson producing. Allison Dahl graphics. Colin Latch ready to play. They probably wouldn't enjoy it if you took the highlighter to the screen, though. Maybe yeah. we'll check with them at the break. I think it's a pretty expensive monitor. I don't think they want me to put a highlighter on it. But Mike Lehman with the great ideas, and I'm Dylan Vizzotto. So that's our entire production crew today. I mean, you have to think when, when Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, he had a lot of bad ideas as well. So, <laughs> right? I don't even know how to respond to that. Oh, Brister ends up keeping it. Gets flipped over on the hit by Hudson. Hughes in the backfield. A lot going the roads on rap play. You had Crawford just completely smashing the running back who just didn't have the ball. And Brewster goes for a, goes for a little bit of a flight right there, but seems to be okay. He gets five. I always worry when your quarterback's flying in the air, not looking like he has a lot of control of his body, but he he's just fine. Takes the shot deep. Peyton Rose has the catch. He's got. The touchdown! Like I said, just fine. Looks just fine. Number two in the game, Peyton Rose. Lindenwood has its first lead this afternoon. You think Rose and Smith, like, talked to each other before the game and said, all right, I'll get the first one, then you get your turn. Then, you know, if we have time, maybe you know, I'll get a second one. We'll see if you can. I don't know. Is OVC leading ninth to today. Extra point. Seibert goes through 21 to 7. Rose is pretty good. I mean that was that was just a strike. I, I mean that that you can't you can't go out there, you can't even walk the ball to him and put it any better than that ball was placed. It's a definition of a gunslinger right there. Just an absolute perfect pass. Third catch, two or touchdowns. He's got 100 yards receiving already. He's now up to, to 35 career touchdowns. He had three scores in last week's overwhelming win against William Jewell, making five TD receptions in the last two games. You gotta wonder if it, it you obviously never wanna think this in game, but there's gotta be a little voice in the back of his head that says, man, I can get the 40 before the end of the year. Well, Lindenwood, of course, first season ineligible for the playoffs. So they have one more game. That's it against McKendry. Uh, obviously a half. I mean, if you, if five you pick up touchdowns. another one or two this game, then you're sitting three or four shy in the last game of the year. Uh, it would be. He would end up having 10 touchdowns in the final three games of his collegiate career. You talk about going out on top. I, I mean, you couldn't have a better way to go out. And then if you're thinking about it, McKendry's not a Division One opponent. So there's probably a little bit of difference in, in skill that you're going to see in that matchup. Who's to say no? It's possible. Last game of the year, too, so you're not necessarily looking to make sure that he stays healthy and fresh for the <laughs> next game. You know what? Why, why not? 
What's that line? Last game of the year. Can't, can't hold, hold anything yeah. back. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you look at this Golden Eagle drive right now. Tennessee Tech, all three timeouts remaining. Minute 53 to go. They're going to get the football to start the second half. See how aggressive Tech will be. First play, it'll be a run all. A little trickery for Tech. Quinton Cross turning the corner. Nice run by Cross to the 40. That was a great play. I Honestly, I can't believe they got that handoff off. It looked like he got hit. Just at the last second, kind of flipped it there. Cross picks it up, and he's moving so fast at that point. There have been nine different ball carriers for Tennessee Tech in this game. Nine different rushers. And that's kind of been a theme, I feel like, the last few games for the Golden Eagles. They've, they've noticed that rushing the ball with a bunch of different options has been working for them, so why not continue it today? Oats fall over the middle. That one is caught by Thornton. He's going to get a first down. Quavel Thornton. All the way down to the Lindenwood 44. Dylan, if you're the Golden Eagles, who else would you want to quarterback this situation than Jeremiah Oatesfall? We talked about his leadership ability, but really, to me, the biggest thing for him this season has been his ability in these exact situations to move the ball down the field. I believe we were talking about before the game. He has four potential game-winning drives this season. Now, they all haven't ended up in victories, but he's put his team either ahead late or with the go-ahead touchdown throughout the, throughout the season. This is another scenario where it's that two-minute warning, move the ball kind of scenario. He's going to throw this one away. Smart play by somebody who has been playing collegiate football since 2017. Absolutely. Stop the clock. It's, it's only first down. You have plenty of yards to go. And where they're at in the field, a minute and a half is an eternity. Still have three timeouts left. That I mean, they could, they could run another 10 plays here easily. I don't know if that's what they're going to be aiming for, but it's something that they can definitely do if they're smart and patient enough. Second and 10. The last two games, the Golden Eagles have had a late drive to get into field goal range. Or searching for more Oats fall pressure. Again, he's able to throw it away. They will say that there was an intended receiver in the area in the form of Pagui, so that is not grounding. Oh well, my, oh my. Darian Bolden making plays now in the backfield. As you can see here, Ochval getting ready to get this pass off and kind of gets his shoulder grabbed by Bolden, so it spins him while he's trying to throw it. That's why that ball went out of bounds, didn't even come close to the receiver. He saw the official immediately point to Pagui, so that's why it's not intentional grounding. I think you'd have a hard time calling it that regardless just because Bolden did touch him. So he's interfering with the attempted pass to begin with. But always nice to have that extra security blanket knowing, all right, there was a receiver over there. Lennon, we're going to take the final time out right here. It'll be a fourth down. That one ended up getting to the 39. Another shovel pass this time to Pagese. You, you know, I don't, I don't hate that for Lindenwood solely because... This isn't field goal range, especially right now with the wind the way it is. And if you punt, the best you can hope to do is pin them inside the 20. So yeah, but yeah, if you're the Golden Eagles, you're probably going probably for it go here. For, right? And then if you're Lindenwood, you're thinking, all right, if we can stop them, we have a minute. That's a good point. We just moved the ball with very little problem on our last drive. Why not? With the wind at their back. Yeah, if absolutely. They get the back. Absolutely. And the 40-yard touchdown pass to Peyton Rose. got 102 receiving yards three catches two for TDs that's just efficiency you can be anything in life should be efficient fourth and five tech is one of two in this game on fourth down it's like Golden Eagles are gonna change the play still time on the play clock Jeremiah Oatesvall throwing, and it's dropped. Had the first down, but unable to haul it in. Heath Price, Tech turns it over on downs. And that's a bit of a surprise. Heath Price has been such a dependable target for Oatesvall this season. Pretty much every time he touches the ball, I feel like he's in the end zone at some point. That's just, that's just a tough play. Price would be the first one to tell you, nah, that's on me. I just dropped the ball. 
that's an easy thing to happen in that scenario as well. This is a guy who plays H-back, so not even a completely true tight end. He's got that weird blocking role where that's going to be what he does most of the time. They like to roll him out and do some kind of trickery plays with him, but just a tough drop. I'll have to kind of shake that off, and Golden Eagles will shift their attention to defense here. No timeouts remaining, Lindenwood. A lot of time left with a minute 12. Brister, pressure, eludes the rush. Brister will throw it away. Another Good smart to the play. Shoot tops. Another, another smart play. Live to fight another day. Don't take the sack. And we're seeing more and more often. It looks like Brister's getting more and more comfortable in this specific game. I'm wondering if that's something he kind of has to do each game, feels it out, gets an idea of what he can and can't do against a certain defense. He's starting to get a feel for when the Golden Eagles get into that backfield because they are still getting back there. Brister again steps up, pass complete. First down, he goes back to Jalen Bethany. Here come the Lions. And as the chains move, they're going to get going, get ready to roll another, another play out. 50 seconds left. Brister's pass is short. He wanted Marshall, but it skipped to the turf. That's probably a better scenario for, for them regardless on that play. You're not looking at more than maybe a five or six yard gain at best. Probably getting tackled inbounds or just out. You're not going to stop the clock probably there. Better to have the, the clock stop. Second and 10, I mean, right now the, the down and distance is irrelevant for them. It's more about preserving time. Move the ball down the field as you can. Cade Brister, a three-time OVC Offensive Player of the Week. He's rolling, throwing, and again tosses it away. Well, Lindenwood almost looking like they're looking for a home run ball right here, or at least something that's going to get them a first down on one shot, not looking to maybe throw for a short, shorter distance. Not sure what the capability of, of the kicker is here, but you have to imagine you're going to have an extra minimum 5 to 10 yards of leg on what you're going to kick here with the wind at your back. We use a lot of options. I don't, I don't believe they're going to be in field goal range just yet. Probably need to get to minimal the 37, 38-yard line territory. Yeah, with that sturdy wind, it's upwards of 20 miles an hour. Seibert's career high is 50. It came last year. A reception is made by Spencer Red. His first catch. Gives Lindenwood an opportunity to go for it here on fourth down. I imagine that'll be the play call. Like I said, I, I just don't think that there's enough leg here in, in order to make this kick. I mean, you're looking at essentially a 58, 58, 59 yard yeah. kick at this point. I don't, I don't know too many collegiate kickers who can make that. I don't know that many NFL kickers who can make one from that distance. So they will go for it. With that gain, it, it sets up a fourth and four on Red's first catch. Brister again avoids the rush. Brister, he'll throw the pass is caught. It'll be a first down. They go to Peyton Rose. Or check that, not Peyton Rose, that's Dom McManus. His first grab. Just love that name, Dom. Granted, I'm a big fan of, of the Fast and Furious movies, so it's an easy <laughs> easy thing to love, but it's just it's an easy name, Dom. Dom gets the first. A sack. Ball's on the ground. Do the Golden Eagles have it? They do. What a play by Relaford to knock it out. Kale Dava recovers. Relaford knocked it out. That's the first turnover the Golden Eagles get. Like you said earlier, they love to blitz Relaford, and case in point right there, he gets around gets around that offensive block almost immediately and just doesn't leave Brister much room to work with. Almost catches him off guard from behind too, and I would imagine you're going to see either a rush or a kneel here. Probably not going to take a shot. 16 seconds up, but three timeouts, so maybe, maybe they will opt to try and see if they can get down the field a little bit, maybe get in the field goal range. So each team has forced a turnover. Each quarterback is fumbled. 
first. Oats fall now, Brister. And with 16 ticks till the break. Tech has the football. There's a pitch to O.J. Ross. Ross trying to get out of bounds. He'll do just that. They will spot O.J. Ross at the 42. He gets five. I don't hate the play. Probably one of those where they're looking to see if maybe they can just break one open with the right with the right block, have a hole, use Ross's speed to the advantage, see if he can get down the field. Clearly better job defensively by Lindenwood there to kind of plug up those big holes. Get a nice little gain out of it, though. Officially marked at the 41, so it is a second down and six. Oates ball goes to Thorne. He'll get tackled. Tennessee Tech will indeed take a timeout with three seconds left. See if Oates Fall can heave it toward the end zone. That, that's, throw it against the wind. Yeah, that's about the only thing I can think of is what you're going to do because any play you run is going to run out the clock for the half. I mean, you'd have to be the most aggressive man on the face of the planet to try and kick one here into the wind. Yeah. So that leaves your option as, well, let's see if we can maybe – Deep ball, Hail Mary. I, I don't know if Oatesville's arm is quite that strong with the wind the way it is. Maybe some trickery, a hook and ladder kind of situation. Throw it down more towards the 2025. A couple of receivers crossing with a, with a little lateral. We shall see. What I do know is if, if I'm statting this game right now, I, I'm just sitting here terrified of the possibilities that could happen with a lot of laterals. Getting ready for the pass. Can Oates fall create some space? He will throw it to Fleming. A lot of lines in front of him. Metrius Fleming still with the football. Here goes Metrius Fleming and finally goes down. Hold your breath if you're a Lindenwood fan. They end up getting Fleming to the turf. A for effort by Fleming though. I, there was a... Little, little snippet there where I thought he might actually get to break that one out the outside and have a seam down that left side, but don't hate this play call. He goes for Fleming. Yeah, at this point, you're thinking, okay, he's going to go down. He's going to, oh, wait, wait, oh, whoa, wait a minute. Got, got some blocking. Wait a minute. But ultimately, he is spun down to the turf by Jaden Patrick. To seal the deal maybe, on half number one. Maybe turn that ball upfield just a smidge too soon, but what a what a half. Entertaining first half, 30 minutes in the book. Lindenwood leads by seven. Halftime Tucker Stadium. He's Mike Lehman. I'm Dylan Bazzano. That was an entertaining first 30 minutes of action here for homecoming. Tennessee Tech. 14, Lindenwood leads at 21. Mike, I, I really think you can categorize this as a seesaw sort of affair. Absolutely. I mean, it's been one touchdown back and forth. Lindenwood got the last two, but just a really good game so far. You've seen a lot of offense, a lot of quarterback play, which is kind of what we expected coming into it with two veteran sixth-year QBs. So far, it's been entertaining. Turnover on both sides, a little bit of defense on both sides. I've enjoyed it so far. Yeah, it's been a good one. Two touchdown catches for Peyton Rose in this game. Kobe Smith has a touchdown grab. Three TDs, of course, then thrown by Cade Brister. Again, Lindenwood leads at 21-14. Let's show you how we got to this point. The first half highlights. Again, a great ball game. Lindenwood leading by seven. Well, we're going to see a lot of offense, I'd imagine. This is how the Golden Eagles got on the board. David Giss from 11 yards out. Mike wanted two touchdowns for Giss in the game. Yeah, he's having a really, really solid game. Doing it a little bit of both ways. Catching the ball, running the ball. It's that first sustained drive by Lindenwood. And a big first half by Brister. This is Peyton Rose's first touchdown. Watch him stay on his feet. And carry his way into the end zone. That's six yards of just pure effort. You got to love it. Jeremiah Oates fall doing a little bit of everything for the Golden Eagles. That time, though, fumbles. That was the turnover that Tech made. Lindenwood comes right back. Ends up getting sacked. The Golden Eagles got the football back. And they delivered with it. David Gist, 71-yard touchdown rush. 
puts the Golden Eagles ahead 14-7. As we said, the longest run from scrimmage by a Golden Eagle since 2014. Radir Anur, it's a great job of staying in bounds and on his feet. Kobe Smith ends up squaring the score. His first touchdown catch. Lindenwood not done. Peyton Rose, this from 40 yards out, his second TD of the ball game. That gives the Lions a 21 to 14 lead. A fun first half in Cookville. We'll step aside. Seven point lead for the Lions on ESPN Plus. Well, it is homecoming here on the campus of Tennessee Tech. You got the marching band out, homecoming court. Whoever won homecoming king, did you see him in a full suit do a backflip? Yeah, it was incredible. I, th I couldn't quite catch it. It sounded like Benjamin Emo, Mr. TTU. What a, what a way to celebrate. He did a full standing backflip in a suit. In a suit. Maybe get him on the football field. Yeah, that, that do was, something. It's pretty impressive. That, he's an athlete, that's for sure. Well, this game is 21-14, Lindenwood leading the last OVC game for both ball clubs. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedule. That's brought to you by the Kentucky State Police. Kentucky State Police is hiring the next generation of troopers who will serve the Commonwealth. New troopers will earn $61,500 a year with guaranteed raises throughout their career. A little sad. There's only one. There's only one game left for Lindenwood. The, the the graphics not that big anymore. Yeah, if you're a Lindenwood fan, that's about as sad as the site gets, right? You know, just knowing you only have one game left, knowing you, you're not eligible for the playoffs this year. So that is it. That's what you have to play for. You got to be happy. You're at home. Yep. You're against a team that you have to feel pretty confident yep. about going in against. And if there's a way to end the year, that's always the way you want to end it. You got a realistic shot, obviously, if you win this game, to go 8-2 and two in your first season, Division I football. Golden Eagles, again, this is their last OVC game. They will go to North Alabama next Saturday. Then the finale right back here for Senior Day against NC Central. A couple interesting contests. North Alabama not having the best of years. Had a change of leadership recently at, with their head coach, so... Kind of interesting to see how the Golden Eagles will handle their last road trip of the season and then right back here against an NC Central team that is having a really, really strong year. But Golden Eagles found a way to beat them on the road last year in their first ever matchup. Well, the upcoming schedules, we are at the half. Lindenwood leading 21-14 to on ESPN+. 21-14, Lindenwood leading. Let's take a look at the first half stats brought to you by Digital Scoreboards, a proud supporter of the OVC. Digital scoreboards provides indoor and outdoor displays. 215 passing yards for Lindenwood. They're checking that box. Keys to the game. Golden Eagles, 196 rushing yards. They're checking that box. I'm pretty sure if you went to Coach Alexander and asked, hey, you know, you got 196 rushing yards at halftime. How do you feel? I don't think there's any way to answer that, but great. Let's, let's do it again. Well, the Golden Eagles, nine different ball carriers. David Giss leading the way, 75 yards. Of course, had the 71-yard rushing touchdown. Brister has gone 14 of 23 TDs and no interceptions. Let's step away one more time during the half. When we return, it'll be time to kick things off in the second. Lindenwood on top by seven. Tennessee Tech to get the football to start half number two. 21-14, Lindenwood leading. Lions looking to spoil homecoming. All right, here's the question. Is that football going to stay on that tee? Well, with the way the wind is rolling right now, I, I just don't know. It, it's whipping really good, and you can feel it even coming through the window here in the press box. So far, so good. Cyber getting ready to kick. It stays on the tee. It's going to go to JV and Allen. It, it gets hit almost like a wall. Allen will field the short hop and get it across the 20. You see the way that the wind played an impact on that? I was going to say, talk about getting hit by a wall. Allen took a shot there, but absolutely. It almost peaked at about the 15, maybe made it three more yards before it bounced. That was, that was strange. It was very strange. Dylan Vazano and Mike Lehman here on ESPN+. Plus. It was an entertaining first half. Cade Brister, three touchdown passes, two to Peyton Rose, one to Kobe Smith. Golden Eagles have two touchdowns from David Giss, 71 yards on the ground, and he caught an 11-yard touchdown pass as well. First possession, half number two, Jeremiah Oatsvall. 
for 132 yards in the first half. The attempt is caught by Clark. And down to the 27, they will spot him. Gain of five. Here goes the rush past the 30 yard line. It will be enough for a first down. David Gist moves the chains. I expect to see a pretty good dose of, of Gist, but realistically, probably just a heavy dose of running here in the second half. I would think here, and th with, with the Golden Eagles going with the win, they may try to throw it a little bit more this quarter as opposed to the fourth, if, if the situation in the game allows them to do that. Obviously, down seven here, there, there's not a huge amount of panic or anything. If you get into the fourth quarter, that may change things up a little bit. But if you're tied, maybe have a lead, you're going to be a lot more comfortable running the ball a lot more. It's over 200 yards rushing. Tech keeps it on the ground again. Oates fall this time. As he will duck his way to the 36-yard line. Oates fall gets four. Well, that was, again, the key to the game. Can Tennessee Tech do a good job running the football? Kist had a great contest at EIU. J.B. Allen had a great contest at EIU. Lindenwood last in the league in rushing defense. So far, so good for TTU. Over 200 rushing yards again. On a second and six, another carry for Fleming. His fourth of the game explodes for the first down. Yeah, that one looked like he, he was almost too fast for his blockers. Got that first that first block that got him down the field, picked up the first down. But then if you watch right here, makes that one cut, and then the blockers aren't far enough downfield yet. He's just so fast and such, such a good job at maneuvering through people. Lloyd Lockett, the senior safety on the stop. First down for Tennessee Tech with the ball at the 47-yard line. It's a promising beginning to the third quarter for the Golden Eagles. Just gets it off Oates fall. He will give it to JV and Allen. He is hemmed up, stopped in the backfield. Kobe McClendon, the first to bring him down. Yeah, great job of sticking with the play by McClendon as well. You had a really good attempt by Allen to break that tackle. Nearly did, but McClendon had a really good hold of the jersey there and was able to keep him intact and then let his teammates come in and finish the job. So the Golden Eagles on that negative play. It is second down and 16. Oates fall. He'll look to throw. He's got Clark again. It'll set up a third and manageable. Clark spun down by Magruder. Golden Eagles get a lot of those yards back. Yeah, just a quick, easy slant there by Clark. Not much to say other than that. Just a nice play. So for Brad Clark, that is his team leading fourth catch. He's pacing the purple and gold. Over 40 yards receiving. Injured all of last year. An impact player in 2022. Third and four. Oates fall. Quarterback keeper. The first down and a whole lot more. Oh, what a block by Clark. Oates fall. Darting to the end zone. He's in there. Jeremiah Oates fall. And Tech can tie it. That was such a smart play by Oates fall. Watch here. He breaks that first that first wave of tacklers. There's no one there, and then he just simply waits. He sees Clark get out into the open, kind of holds up, waits for him to make that block, and then goes around the other side of him. Great, smart play by Oatesfall. Great block by Clark. That's hard to say. We have what could be a, tall, a tie ball game here. It looks like Hayden Olsen will not be taking the kick, however. It's Devin Parker. He's on for the extra point. Parker kick up and through. Let's start over. 21-21. It's a 53-yard rushing touchdown. Jeremiah Oatesfall. 
tie ball game. 47 yards, pardon me, the tie ball game. As we'll step aside on ESPN+. Plus. Well, this time it's Tennessee Tech tying the game. 47-yard rushing touchdown. How about that block by Brock Clark? Spectacular block. Clark's having a heck Two of a blocks. game. As, as you said, leads the Golden Eagles in receptions right now. Had that big one to set up that third down play. Great game, great block, great run, great vision by Oatesfall to realize that there was a block to be had there and to hold up on yes. that run just enough so that that block could be made. This is a, this is about what we were expecting coming into this game. We figured there'd be a lot of points on the scoreboard, and so far at 21-21, we've got that. Brad Clark, a receiver, put two guys on the seat of their pants on that block, on that play, rather. It's impressive. Yeah, he, he's a big guy for a receiver. You, you don't think about it, but when you look at him, he's he's built very well, almost kind of like a tight end. So he's got that big body, used it well right there. Well, we'll see Brister and company. All he's done is go 14 of 20, 215 yards, three TDs. Peyton Rose, another massive game out of him, 102 receiving yards, three catches, two for scores. They will go right back to the air. Kobe Smith, that is his fifth reception to lead everybody in the contest. Relaford on the tackle. Right back to the line, Lindenwood. Dylan, I know you've watched a lot of Tech football this season. Does it ever bother you or confuse you when you watch Nyquan Washington playing with those gold shoes? Every time I see him, I think there's a flag out on the field. <laughs> uh, Andrew Martin, the carrier there. It'll be a third and short. Everybody knows gold shoes make you faster. I'm, I'm a little surprised, actually, that he's allowed to wear shoes the exact color of, of the flag, though. You think that'd be a conflict of interest there or would maybe create some issues? What if he loses a shoe? <laughs> Could be a flag on the play. Uh, maybe. Good third and short, Brister. Will be a first down where forward progress is. Again, going back to Smith. He is having himself a huge game with his sixth grab. Now he'll pick up the first, but he'll be met by Jacquez McGowan. Really talented freshman for the Golden Eagles. He's been starting just about every game this year. It's looked very, very good for a freshman. Golden Eagles, and, and that's one of the things from Tech this season. Only one interception defensively. It was Jacquez McGowan, the very first game of the year at Kansas. Brister calls his own number. A nice run on first down. He's brought down from behind by Dava. The way this game has gone, Tech led 7-0. Lindenwood tied it at 7. Golden Eagles on top 14-7. Lindenwood tied it at 14. Then the Lions took the lead 21-14. Tech has tied it in this third quarter. Just back and forth. A little tug of war at Tech. Career penalty. That's actually Linden. Well, we'll see. I think it's going to be a false start. Yeah. That's Lindenwood's first penalty today. Oh, Tech only has one across the way. And I double checked. Washington does have both shoes on, so that is a real flag. <laughs> it's on the wrong side of the field for that one. I, so. I think it's a, it's a great look. You've seen I do, I do enjoy it. I think they're great. Bottom He's got that screen. little, that little gold undershirt too, poking out. Very gold color gloves. coordinated. Probably cleans up very well. Those gold gloves. Yeah. He knows how to accessorize. Got to look the part. Absolutely. Second down and nine after the penalty. Brister will go down. More Golden Eagle pressure. Jacorian Wren, the first one to say hello. Brister just about made a spectacular of a play. He ducks underneath it, but almost looks like the legs kind of tripped up each other and he had to go down. But you can see he's a little upset with himself, knew that he was very close to breaking that sack. And now that's going to leave a, a, a third and 11. A lot, lot of room to work here. I would not want to look up and see Jacorian Wren coming right at me like that. No, not at all. And it will be another sack. The sixth one for Tennessee Tech in this game. And it looks like it was Theron Gaines. I, I don't know off the top of my head. I have to imagine that's his first career sack as a Golden Eagle. And just 
Great play. Yeah, a lot of pressure there. Devin Squires was in on it, too. Probably going to get a half sack for each of them. You, you'd have to imagine Corey Wren in there, too. I mean, the entire line was just involved on that one. They, they've done a really good job of getting penetration today. Brister's been able to handle it for the most part, but this is going to be a key for the Golden Eagles if they can get these little three and out such scenarios, get themselves some nice field position. Riley Ripper had to keep it low, all things considered with the win. The line drive punt takes a Lindenwood hop to the 30-yard line. Well, the Golden Eagles will take over. We will see what Tennessee Tech does when we return. All tied up on ESPN+. Plus. Golden Eagle defense, seven sacks today. They'll get the football back. First, we will take a look at the series history presented by Delta Dental. Unleash your smile power with Delta Dental. Tennessee State does lead Tennessee Tech in the all-time series history, but this series, they've never played before. Yeah, why not look at a different one? Because there yeah, is technically no series history. I'm a big history buff, <laughs> so I guess we're making history today. Yeah, the, the series history with O.J. Ross. He will pile his way to a first down right now. It's obviously tied in the all-time series history, and it's tied in this ballgame. Yeah, it looks like we got a little bit of an injury here for Lindenwood. It's like Colby McClendon kind of limping off the field there at the end of that play. So we'll substitute for him, and we'll get back into the action. O.J. Ross has looked impressive with the football. Golden Eagles have it at the 41. Gain of 11. Willie Miller, he's going to throw the football. He's got a man wide open. That's Ross who catches it. And Ross will get tripped up inside the five. I mean, so many great things going on there. But what a tackle by Darian Bolden saving a touchdown but this is a perfect pass from willie miller we saw him do this earlier this season a nice little play where he kind of goes way out wide Oatsfall tosses it to him and then he throws it just a spectacular play call for the lead ross trying to get into the end zone he's there touchdown tennessee tech and the golden eagles go back out on top you got to love the play call here to go back to Ross. Let him earn that touchdown. He did everything he could on that first play and just got kind of tripped up by the shoelaces. Let him get the score. Two drives, two touchdowns in this third quarter. The Golden Eagles regain the edge. That's an O.J. Ross drive right there. We're going to see the extra point here. And obviously that shorter touchdown, but... What a perfect, and I mean perfect, throw by Willie Miller. I, w I honestly wasn't sure. Ross was almost running underneath it, and I wasn't sure if he was going to get to it, but that ball was absolutely perfect. Never broke stride. Bolden just made a heck of a play to keep him out of the end zone for at least one play. 56 yards that play. Ross then punches it in for three. Golden Eagles lead by seven. We'll be right back after this. Twenty-eight, twenty-one. Tennessee Tech leading. O.J. Ross, an eleven-yard rush. Then he caught a fifty-six-yard pass from Willie Miller. Golden Eagles went trickery. And then Ross gets it into the end zone from three yards out. For the Tennessee Tech freshman, that's his first career rushing touchdown. See now the the win affecting kicking off. Yeah, so you'll have to hold it. It's these it's these gusts that are just crazy. They're blowing stuff around all over the place. When, when we were at the halftime break, I I had a minor moment of panic because the press box was moving. It, it was it was it's a wind advisory. My laptop almost fell out of the booth. That would that would be a problem. 
Yeah, it's kind of a good thing that things don't sit directly under the booth anymore, but let's take a look at this pass. Look at this perfect ball by Willie Miller. Money. Right on the hands. What a spectacular tackle there, though. That's just good football play. You had the trickery element of it, the, the design of the play. You had the pass, the catch, the tackle. That was fun to watch. Yeah, and my correction, Lloyd Lockett appeared to make that tackle, but just a spectacular shoestring tackle. Of course, it went for not in the whole grand scheme of things. Golden Eagles punch it in on the next play, so we'll see if Lindenwood can answer. Peyton Rose gets his first carry. He is met by Josh Relliford at the 30-yard line. I, I hope to never meet Josh Relliford that way because that was, a, that was a pretty good hit he just laid on him. Top 10 in the OVC in tackles. Good shot. Yeah, really, really good shot there. Great camera work. We appreciate that. Makes me look really smart. Tough that takes deal. a lot of work. <laughs> be a second down and five. Brister throwing, reception made, making the move for the first down is Abe Hare, the freshman tight end. Cameron Hudson on the stop. The pride of Taylor, Missouri. Hare, his first catch. You know, Dylan, a lot, as you would expect, a lot of Missouri guys on this Lindenwood team, but they cover 17 states, this roster. See some California, fair amount. Yeah. You know, they got a couple from Hawaii. It's, it's pretty, pretty long trek from Hawaii to, to Missouri. Two other countries. Let's see if you can guess. Jared Rhodes on that last carry. Two other Two countries. other countries. Should have done my homework to know this. Canada. Canada's not one of them, surprisingly. One of them. Oh, is, Australia? Yeah, one, yeah, yep, that's one of them. And not surprising, a lot of punters and kickers come out of Australia. This is true. That one would be Mexico. Okay, okay. A player from Mexico. There is a state that they do not have a player from that would stun you. As the carry will be Brister. Calls his own number, gets to the 45-yard line. It'll be a third and short. He will be one yard away from the first down. You, you give a little look through Lindenwood's game notes, which are very nice. They got this great map, shows you where all the players are from. They do not have a single player from the state of Arkansas on that team. And that's right there. right there. A little strange. I think I saw they have one player from the state of Tennessee. They're running back Robert Giamo. Last year's GLVC freshman of the year. Brister, a first down on the carry. So, like the Lions have done time and time again in this game, Golden Eagles, you can check that box as well. A response after a score. Yeah, this is this is exactly what I was expecting coming into this game. I, I felt like it'd be kind of a high-scoring affair. A little more success probably for both sides than I, than I originally would have thought. I knew the Golden Eagles have some success on the ground. They've kind of turned that into a little bit more than I would have expected. Brister had it the whole time. Fold the Tennessee Tech defense. He gets the first down. And now into or down to the 37-yard line. Watch the fake. It's a nice fake. Really smart play by Brister. Easy yard for him. He'll take it. He, he's had to really earn his rushing yards today. He's taken a lot of sacks back there, which affect that rushing yard total. That's why you love when, when you look at these things, you get to see the net yards gained as opposed to like just what he gained overall. So he's run for a lot more than what it looks like. Been sacked seven times as they go back to the freshman roads to the 35 yard line, a collection of two. A little bit of a healthy mix of rushing here for Lindenwood, probably a little bit just because of the way the wind is. Harder to attack going into the wind. Maybe even just trying to get this play clock run down so they can start going the other direction with the switch in the fourth quarter. Yeah, with the way that the elements are, wind advisory in Cookville, the fact that Lindenwood will get the wind at their back in the fourth quarter could be a huge factor in this game. Another handoff. 
busting it out wide on the carry roads for a first down hard nose running for the rookie tailback what a series of blocks by the left tackle blake roganhofer just watch him if you get watch his huge block right there opens it up and he's i mean he's halfway downfield he was ready to block that all the way into the end zone that was a spectacular block that opened that right side two-time all great lakes valley conference offensive lineman Six foot three senior. Rhodes, healthy dose of him. Golden Eagles get the tackle with Seth Carlisle. It'll be a second down and long. Linden Wood at the 29-yard line, attempting to respond to the Tennessee Tech touchdown. Where O.J. Ross gave the purple and gold the lead. We'll go to the final minute of this third quarter. You know, I'm very tempted to just yell out there, one minute remaining. It's Brister's pass is caught. It's a good tackle right there on the reception by Hare. Nyquan Washington, gold shoes and all. With one minute remaining, referencing soccer public address over here. Yeah, I got to do that a couple times yesterday. Tennessee Tech hosting the Ohio Valley Conference Soccer Championships, the semifinals last night, and well, the championship match tomorrow at 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock here in Cookville. For the right to go to the NCAA tournament, Tennessee Tech against SIUE, the top two seeds in the tourney. Brister, he'll throw toward the end zone, wide open, and a touchdown by Chase Longcree. Lindenwood can tie the game. I mean, just purely, that's got to be some broken coverage there, you'd imagine. I, I, you can't find yourself any more wide open. <laughs> I mean, he could have... He could, uh, he could have done the Dougie. He could have done anything he wanted to in the end zone right there. That'll be about the easiest touchdown he'll have in his career. That is Cade Brister's fourth touchdown pass in this game. Seibert for the tie. Again, squared away. A fresh affair. 28 to 28. Six seconds left in the third. Tell you what, Lindenwood really enjoys scoring with under 10 seconds left in the quarter. That's the second time they've done that. They did that with three seconds earlier in this game. So we'll see a kickoff. We'll see if we see anything after that before we go to the fourth quarter. But you just can't say enough about the quarterback play today so far. It's been spectacular. The rushing has been very, very strong, obviously, for the Golden Eagles. But I've been impressed by, by the, the little bit of rushing yards that Lindenwood's been able to eke out here. A little chunk, more chunk yardage for them. Not as many of those big explosive plays that we've seen from the Golden Eagles. But Brister doing a good job of kind of doing a little bit of both. These 17 rushes. 23-yard touchdown reception to Chase Loncrete, the junior tight end in Northern Colorado transfer. That is his first touchdown this season. 23 TD passes this year for Cade Brister. That's top 10 in FCS football. Is it bad that that just sounds like not a large enough number for him? I was actually thinking the same thing as this kickoff will go out of bounds. So the Golden Eagles end up getting pretty good field position. That is the second kickoff out of bounds, one for both each side rather. Kind of seems like every time we were reading about him going into this game, it was like, oh, he had five touchdowns here, four here. I think he had a game with seven. Granted, I know a chunk of those came on the ground as well. He just knows how to find the end zone. Yeah, he had that game at Central Arkansas where Lyndon Wood won 52-49. to You talk about a shootout. He threw for over 400 yards. He threw for two TDs, and he rushed for five of them in that game. That's, that's a pretty good night. Pretty good day at the office. Man, it was such a, Central Arkansas has been a really good FCS program. 
And in fact, they've won three of the last four, including defeating Kennesaw State. The only loss during that stretch to these Lions. Reception made. That'll be the final play of the first, or the third quarter rather. It's Metrius Fleming. And he'll take us to the fourth. What a game this is. Entertaining to say the least. 28-28. We'll see you for the fourth. Homecoming game. Tennessee Tech will enter the fourth quarter. Let's try it again. You talk about making the adjustment, our production crew. That's the series history. Let's not look at what the first letter before meeting, first word rather, but close enough. Tennessee Tech and Lindenwood, the first meeting in the all-time series. First meeting. That's the series yep, history. Yep, that's our series <laughs> history. Kind of anticlimactic. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> this is a carry by Willie Miller. Nice tackle on the far side there. By Lindenwood's Wesley Hines. And that's Hines H I N E S, not the ketchup. Thank you for the clarification. You know, just for the viewers back home. Right. Third down upcoming. Tech is six for 11 on third downs. Lindenwood is five of 10 on third down. So. You would think a 28-28 really, game has been a lot of offense. Really good efficiency on both sides. Quick pass, David Giss. He's not going to get the first down. A big-time tackle right there by Chase Giorgi. Yeah, Willie Miller kind of got stranded on an island there trying to decide who he was going to block. Day Day was waiting for him to make that decision, but didn't really make a difference. You have two against one, it's typically not going to end well. Great stop there by Lindenwood. Kobe Smith will be back for the punt. Now, Lindenwood has the wind at their back in this fourth quarter. The wind advisory in Cookville. Gusts of upwards of 20 miles an hour. It's been a theme of the ball game. See the punt? Really good punt. Nicholas Bigelow on that drive. So he'll pin him inside the 20. And we will get immediate timeout. 28-28, your score. We're all tied up. Quarter number four. I mean, as a fan, as a broadcaster, tie game, fourth quarter, final conference game of the year for both of these teams. What more could you ask for? It's a great game. I mean, if you think about it, this is what you get geared up for every summer, waiting for college football to come back, is you want the games like this. High scoring, a lot of offense, a lot of points, a lot of entertainment. First play, the Lindenwood drive. The carry goes across the 20. It's again, Jared Rhodes. With Kiss Christian Cantrell, the tackle. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, it was kind of hard realizing there was a play going. You got the Gold Eagle band still rolling through. I, I didn't know we had started there and for they, a second. They were going to finish that song. Yes, they, they were. were. <laughs> they were going to do that. Festive atmosphere in Cookville. We had great shots of the homecoming parade earlier today. Tennessee Tech's annual Hall of Fame induction ceremony last night. Another carry by Rhodes. They have called his number an awful lot. But tough sledding there. Whole host of Golden Eagles. You see Cantrell once again involved. Dylan, you got to MC that Hall of Fame banquet last yep. night. First time. What'd you think? Yeah, it was fun. I mean, five great inductees. Good time. They, they were honored, the five Hall of Famers. During halftime, it's always one of the big events on the campus of Tennessee Tech. Brister, pressure, and he's going to go down. The Golden Eagles get another sack. Hudson Tucker this time. He, he's been so much fun to watch this season. This is a sophomore, but he's had really a phenomenal year, and that's that's been a big part of it, is just getting the quarterback, creating havoc. When he hasn't had sacks, he's racked up a bunch of hurries. Tennessee Tech had 12 sacks in eight games coming into today. They've got eight in this one. Eight 
That's that's just incredible effort. They'll force a punt. Be interesting to see how far this ball will fly. Really gets a hold of it. Quabel Thorne. He will have a little bit of space though. He's as speedy as they come. But that's just great coverage by Lindenwood. Man Magruder. He's able to get to Quabel Thornton. Yeah, it's not often you kick a ball that far and your coverage is downfield that quickly. Just a nice play. Another break in the action. Tex turn with the football when we come back to Cookville. Early in the fourth quarter, 28-28 your score. Dylan Vizzano and Mike Lehman on ESPN. Plus, how about some scores from around the OVC? That is impressive. Kennesaw. At number 10, Martin, 44 to 27. This is a Tech team that lost to Kennesaw State in overtime. It's a big showing by the Owls. Yeah, not not a Kennesaw team that's had the year they wanted, preseason ranked number eight, and just has had a rough go of it, really. Haven't had a lot of wins on the year. Go into Tennessee Martin. That's a place that doesn't, they have not lost a lot of home games there. Taking a shot deep for Fleming. Juggled around, it's incomplete. Trying to throw it into the wind. Slightly underthrown. Fleming almost a circus catch. There's what we've been talking about all game is the wind. You can tell. I mean, he has him wide open. That ball just, just kind of died. I mean, you can see it just. It, it, the trajectory just kind of died. Ends up getting underthrown. If nothing else, you just have to be fortunate that ball didn't get picked off. Second down and 10. A Lion team looking to win its fifth consecutive ball game. Golden Eagles trying to win two in a row for the first time this year. Gist has some running room. David Gist a first down to the 40. I mean, that hole was big enough to drive a truck through. And, and he got into that real quick, burst it, picked up that first down. If that doesn't put him at the 100-yard mark, it's going to be awfully close for the game, I believe. Devin Edwards and Lloyd lock it on the stop. Gist gets 14 on that rush. He's got 94 rushing yards on six carries. Obviously, he had the 71-yard rushing touchdown. At the time, that gave Tech a 14-7 lead. First down play with some patience. David Giss, nice cut. Giss working hard, but a whole host of Lions there. Including Sterling Williams to help bring him down. The thing about Giss that I've always liked so much is he's not a huge back, but he's not a speedster either. At the 71-yard rush, obviously the longest of his career. There's a little bit of a reason to that. He's, he's not a gasser. He's not going to go out there and beat everyone in a foot race, but his ability to sit there and read defenders and use his legs to get around. I mean, he's got footwork like you read about. Mm. And he's he's been spectacular really his entire career when he's been healthy. And he's just showing it again today. It's tough, too. It's very it's tough. Tough kid. I mean, he rarely, he rarely goes down on the first hit. It's usually going to take a couple of guys to bring him down. Fights for extra yards all the time. He's having a great game again. Third down and four. Golden Eagles six of 12 on third down conversions. With 9.25 left in the game. Pass is caught. Thornton's got a first down. Let's watch the freshman go. Knocked out of bounds by Man Magruder, but the huge first down conversion for Tennessee Tech. Yeah, just a nice, another play, another another like end around run. This time, instead of running it, they throw it. That speed is so dangerous when you can get it out into the open field. Another huge first down for the Golden Eagles. Tech on the move. Oates fault. Another one that's completed. Again, it this time rather Brad Clark. First down, Tennessee Tech. I mean, what a game by Brad Clark. And it's been more than just catching the ball and picking up the yards. It's He's done everything. Even on that play just before where he got Thornton a little bit of space, you saw him throw his hands up and kind of throw one of those I'm just getting in the way of you blocks. Got him probably another five, six yards on. He is having a spectacular day. Thornton got 28 on that reception. And then they come right back to Brad Clark. Who collects 12. T 
Tech knocking at the door. Javian Allen, he's got a burst of steam. Inside the 10 yard line. Again, a stop by Magruder. We get down eight minutes. And it'll be interesting. You're at a point now where you're not going to be able to run out a lot of this clock, and Lindenwood can move the ball very quickly down the field. So if, if you're Tech, you have to imagine you're probably going to get the ball back again in this game. Probably see a lot of rushing there. We'll see if they continue with the ground game here or opt to go into the air. Tennessee Tech nearing the 300-yard mark in terms of rushing. Looks like they might have a chance to get it here. Brad Clark working hard. He's got the first down. I mean, we we keep I keep talking about it. Just how good of a game. Look at the effort here. He breaks at least two tackles. If he has another yard or two on whip wise on the field, he's in there for a touchdown. Just ran out of room at the sideline. Georgie forces him out of bounds. First and goal, Tennessee Tech. Seven yard carry, Clark Golden Eagles now have 303 rushing yards in this game. 553 total yards of offense. And Dylan, that'll be the first time the Golden Eagles have gone for over 300 rushing yards since 2018. Piled up 507 against Kennesaw State. Whoa. There's Oatesfall. Did he break the plane? It looks like he is just short. It will be second and goal. Yeah, they're going to try and get this ball off real quick. He's probably going to try and snap this, get into the end zone. Quarterback keeper dives over the top date, and it is a touchdown by Jeremiah Oatesfall. Smart play by the quarterback. Knew he probably didn't get in. It wasn't worth fighting for a replay or to have it reviewed. Rather, just get to the line quickly, try and catch the other team off guard, and dive into the end zone. Well, he tied his season high earlier today with a 47-yard rush. That went for a score. This is his third rushing touchdown of the year, second of the ball game. And the Golden Eagles go back ahead. Parker on. The Tennessee Tech lead is seven. TTU marches right down the field. 10 plays, 74 yards. Golden Eagles have the lead. Parker adds on. And we will head to a break in the action. Good one going. Late stages for Jeremiah Oatesfall's second rushing touchdown of the ball game. It's given Tennessee Tech a 35 to 28 lead. We've got 636 left in this affair. Four rushing TDs for Tennessee Tech today. 555 yards of total offense for TTU. That's a strong day. This might be the highlight of the day, though. The ball just stayed on the tee. Do love to see that. It's fair catch is called for and made. So Lindenwood will end up taking it at the 25-yard line. That one hauled in by Marshall. Well, we've seen it so many times in this game. You look at 35-28, neither team is led by more than seven. It's been back and forth that nature. Lindenwood has had one lead. It was at the half, 21-14. Tech tied it, took the lead. Lindenwood responded to square to 28. And the Golden Eagles just marched down the field, 10 plays, 74 yards. Now Brister's turn. First, a carry along the near side. Another rush by Rhodes. That's his eighth attempt today. Cameron Hudson, the tackle. Feels like you're going to see a lot more. Well, there's only one more game for Lindenwood, but Rhodes. We said it earlier, only two carries before the William Jewell game. 11 rushes for 90 yards. He's looked good today. Could be a big piece of the future. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's one of those, you're going to always need a running back because you have to be able to build offensive progressions both sides of the, or both ways, I should say. Brister's throw, the catch over the middle. Forward progress will end up being a first down. 
Seth Carlisle got the stop. Dylan, on that you, reception by Bethany. Dylan, as you know, offenses don't always stay the same. I mean, you've got a quarterback like Cade Brisser who's been there for so long. He's obviously going to move on to better things after this season. So, you know, there's no there's, there's nothing to say that Cole Duggar can't come in and have the same kind of impact. But at the same time, that might be an opportunity to try out a couple different other options in, in the run game. Really nice fake and a rush right there to the 41-yard line for Brister. Yeah, he does a lot for this team. As it stands, while Brister is still here, he, he's just going to continue to ball out. And that's just what he's been doing all game. That's what he's been doing all seasons. What he's been doing his entire career. The only preseason all-OBC offensive player for this Lindenwood team. Brister, another carry. Gets to the 44. Gain of three. Third and short. And you talk about any, I don't care what level of football you're talking about, 10,000 career passing yards is an absolute incredible achievement. I love what Dwayne Alexander, the Tennessee Tech head coach, had to say about him. He said he's like a linebacker, the quarterback position, and I think that's just a very good compliment for a QB. He's absolutely built like it, and if you think about it, the linebacker is basically the quarterback of the defense. He's built like it, kind of throws his body around like it, makes those smart decisions. The toughness element. That's a reception for a first down. Kobe Smith. So on third down, Smith secures and moves the chains for Lindenwood. And Dylan, you have to think, even though there's still four minutes left in this ball game, with the way that the Golden Eagles have been able to run the ball, this is going to be four down territory, especially with the wind at your back if you're Lindenwood. You have to make every possession here count, make every play count. But at the same time, don't take unnecessary risks. There's still so much time on that clock, and both sides still with three timeouts. Rhodes going in motion. Brister, he'll look to run. Bit of an opening before the slide. See where they'll spot him. It's into Tech territory. Down to the 47-yard line. It's really fun to watch him back in the pocket and on plays like that he he so narrowly avoids getting tackled and getting sacked and it's just that's just a feel thing like you can't really teach that that's just him and his ability to read where people are even when he can't see them he can just kind of tell he's been really good at that today brister back to work pressure from samari burns with a sack The ninth sack today for Tennessee Tech. Of course, you can't feel everything, and I don't think he felt this one. This was one of those I think he was hoping to maybe catch a block. He saw him out of the corner of his eye, tried to get around and get rid of it, but Burns a little bit too quick there. Makes a huge, huge play. You have a big third and long. So it'll end up being third down and ten. And the clock continues to tick. We're, we're down to two and a half minutes. So if you're Lindenwood, you know you're going to have to go for it if you can't convert here. Golden Eagles bringing some pressure. Brister steps up. He's got a chance to get the first down. Brister has it. First down for the quarterback. That should be a first. They're going to mark him right about where that, that first down marker is. Same just because short. of where he gave himself up on the slide. Oh, wait. Now they are going well, yeah, to actually are... fourth down. Then they said... No, they, they, they're they still listing it as a fourth down as of right now, but I, I would yeah, be stunned if chains. you don't see either the first down marker move or them have a measurement here. Coach Dwayne Alexander, top of the screen. You can see him. He is hot. Well, there's confusion here, too, because the chain crew clearly doesn't know whether or not they're supposed to move. Obviously, Coach Alexander not happy about something. My guess is because they're trying to rule it a first down. He's probably arguing, you can't just rule it. You need to go ahead and look at that. This is too close of a ball game. We've played too much today. Hey, I'm with you it, with the confusion element as well. Not just the fact that I'm sure he's irate over the spot, but you go from fourth down, which they initially ruled it, then the official on the far side saying move the chains. That's where, when I called it first down, I... I first saw the official signal to move the chains and another one came in and said no that's fourth down yes. then they went to move it and yeah there was just a, a lot of chaos right there a lot, a we'll lot of chaos and to, to me it's it's one of those it's a tough situation too because 
he did give himself up. And, and when you do that, it's supposed to be right when that initial action happens. That's supposed to be the end of the play at that yard line. I think that's what Coach Alexander was arguing. He was saying he should be another yard back because he started his slide at that point. That's one of those plays, though. Unless you go back and review it, I don't know how you would how you'd be able to really manage that in real time. Because you're looking to make sure if someone doesn't get hit incorrectly or the wrong way. I honestly think the spot is pretty on without looking directly at it. But y you had it. He was about another yard and a half past where they marked the ball initially when he ended up it. But it's where he initially slides. And I think they got it pretty close. Yeah, I, I think that they got the spot right, to be honest. But the way it was it was managed, I think, is, is more the issue. And yes. It's going to be a first down. Now we're under two minutes left. Huge run by Brister on a third and long. Ball's on the ground. He ends up picking it back up. Brister, he's going to be sacked yet again. Aiden Reigns. Very big play by Aiden Range. Haven't seen him a lot. Haven't heard his name called a lot today, but just took advantage of, of, I don't know if the ball may be a little slippery with some of the rain we've had out there or what, but kind of shocked Brister that play developed the way it was. It took him a little while to pick the ball up. Well, Lindenwood will take a timeout. Tech's 10th sack. They will ask for a media timeout. We'll step away. Minute 38 to go. Tech man in the house. You talk about a great outfit. It's good to see him back. I'm, I'm pretty sure he graduated last year, I want to say. So happy to have him back in attendance today for homecoming. Ten sacks, Tennessee Tech. You did the research, a school record. School record, ten sacks. Nine, actually. Nine would have broken the record. So, But why not get an even ten? Brister, the catch is made. It'll end up being a third and long on the completion right there to Jalen Bethany. It looks like they're going to spot him at about the 44. Leaving it at third and 13. But as we've talked about, this is two down territory, especially as we're approaching the one minute mark. Two timeouts left for Lindenwood. Cade Brister rolling. Cade Brister throwing. It'll be a first down. A clutch catch. It's again Jalen Bethany. Yeah, Bethany having a nice day. Hasn't gotten into the end zone yet, but having a nice day, making some big plays when they need them. Brister just so patient on that play. Rolling out, didn't have anyone. Didn't have anyone, still didn't have anyone. At the last minute, finds his receiver open. A little first down action. Let's keep this one interesting with under a minute to go. A Lindenwood takes the timeouts. They have one remaining. How about this for a finish? The way the Brister operates. You're on the road. It's your last OVC game. It's your last Division I game. You are not eligible for the playoffs. Getting ahead of ourselves is first. We will take a look at this clutch third down throw. The clutch catch right there by Bethany. If you were to get in, would you think about going for two? Obviously ahead of ourselves. I think you definitely have to think about it, especially with the way the defense has kind of struggled to stop the run. Brister rolling. Brister's got some space. He ends up ducking out of bounds. Nice first down rush. The quarterback has made huge plays on this drive. Part of my decision making is going to take into how much time gets left on the clock as well. The Golden Eagles have 40 seconds or so. I have to consider going for it. Yes, they're going to have to drive into the wind and, and whatnot, but they still have three timeouts. They'd only have to get into... What you would think is field goal range. Obviously, it's not going to be a normal field goal range kicking into the wind. And then you have a question mark of, we haven't really seen Hayden Olsen out there much today. So is Devin Parker going to be the kicker in that scenario? Evades the rush yet again. Brister incomplete. He went for the tight end. who has got a touchdown catch today. Chase Laundry. The 
pass incomplete. That'll bring up another third down. But as we've said many times already, this is four down territory. And only third and four. I think this is one of those very first maybe progression might be see if there's anything that looks like might open up for the end zone. Otherwise, just worry about the first down. You still have 46 seconds left. In this spot on the field, that's an eternity. Third down and four. Brister, more pressure. Brister looking to run yet again. He will get the first down. Slip the tackle from Nyquan Washington. Another massive play with his legs. I mean, if you're the Golden Eagles, first thing you're going to say is, wow, you need to make that tackle. But that's, that is just a spectacular play. Nine out of ten quarterbacks, they're going down on that play. They don't have the sure-footedness that he does. He, both legs are wrapped up there for a split second. That's typically enough for you not to be able to keep your balance coming out. And he did a great job of keeping it just enough to grab that first down. He's been sacked ten times. He's rushed an additional 16 times. He moves the chains. He's looking to run. Another rush by Brister. Doing it all on this drive. Now it looks like Lindenwood's going to call their final timeout with 30 seconds. That was an interesting play call. Especially when now you know that your, your timeouts are done. That might have been a scenario where it might have behooved them to spike the ball. Maybe save a little bit more time. Then you lose it on the downs too. So it's it's a really fine line that they have to walk here. 30 seconds, though, where they're at, I, I would guess that it's relatively irrelevant because even if you get tackled in bounds here, 30 seconds is plenty of time to get back to the ball, run another play. So right now your focus is see if you can't move the chains one more time because then you can spike the ball. Don't worry, have to worry about downs. You can control the clock that way. Second and five. With the ball at the 10. No timeouts. 30 seconds left. Cade Brister to the end zone. It's incomplete. Peyton Rose, the intended receiver, knocked away by Cam Hudson. That was really, really good. No call. Both sides fighting for it, but just a spectacular play by Cameron Hudson. Got that inside position, so you really couldn't throw a flag there. Both hands on, both guys had hands on each other, so it's a really good job of getting the inside position. So now we'll look. Do they go for that first down, or are they going to go try back into the end zone? You still have two tries. I'd imagine they'll have one play at least drawn up that'll be just short. Here on third down, Cade Brister launching to the end zone. That'll sail out of bounds. With Kobe Smith at the back corner. It'll come down to this. Fourth down. I think that one, he just waited a smidge too long to throw it. By the time he gets the pass off, he's basically out of room into that back corner. And he just he just ends up throwing that one away. You, you really, I mean, no play to be had on the ball. These are the moments you live for. Oh, this is a football game. On a fourth down. Cade Brister. Can he pull the Lions even yet again? Tech with pressure. Pass is complete and into the end zone. It's a touchdown. Chase Loncrete. Lindenwood within a point. Just a really, really nice play. No one really around Longcrete, and then great effort there. We're obviously going to have some time put back yeah, on the, the clock as it just out. expired. I'm sure they'll take care of that here before we get to the extra point. Uh, it, Lindenwood's going to go for two, it looks like. Again, you, the old cliche, you're on the road, you go for the win. You can't make the FCS playoffs. This is your last conference game, your last Division One game. I, I like it. I love this decision. Yeah. I'm with you. I mean, you literally have nothing to lose, especially in this season, other than maybe just a little bit of pride and, and looking for an 8-2 and two record. If that's all you you could potentially lose in this scenario, why not? Yeah, I, I you got to like this call. Credit to the head coach, sixth season at the helm, Jed Stugart. 
Made the transition, highly successful. Couple of years in the GLVC. This is the one that brings them within a point on fourth down. Chase Loncrete, second TD catch of the ball game. Talk about Cade Brister. I mean, we talked about Oatesfall and his ability to go down the field when that counts, make plays. Brister, same model. Made plays all day. Made plays with his feet and with his arm on that on that drive. I'd be stunned if you don't see him controlling the ball here on this final play. Well, also, you really have to tip your cap to him. He's been sacked 10 times in this game. 10! Hasn't looked phased once, though, if, I mean, if, you, if you think about it. All those sacks, he's gotten right back up every single time. Again, for the ball game, Tech just took a timeout. We got another stoppage. They, the music? Yeah, they, they're saying that they cannot play the music when they're at the line of scrimmage. That's a complaint you, you get from coaches a lot on the road, so. Well, here we go. Brister rolling. Brister pressure. He's going to have to throw. The pass is incomplete. Tech gets a stop. And the Golden Eagles will win this game. Yeah, just, just nothing ever opened up for him as he rolled out that direction. That's the only danger when you roll out is you lose the space for yourself to work with. He tried everything he could, but there was just nobody open. A really nice, basically short field prevent defense there by the Golden Eagles. They didn't really try to rush the quarterback at all outside of their down linemen. It's a spectacular defensive play by the Golden Eagles. Well, Tennessee Tech as Josh Relaford. Who else? makes the huge play defensively. No timeouts, Lindenwood, a kneel down will win this game. Tennessee Tech about to win its second consecutive, its third game of the year. The three wins for the Golden Eagles will be by a combined five points. Two one point wins and a three point nod at EIU. Yeah, it's been an odd year for the Golden Eagles, a lot of close games, but Still have one job to do here. Have to make sure that if you field the kick, if it's a field, if it's within the field that you secure it cleanly, I would imagine anyone who's going to touch the ball is going to call for a fair catch. But with the win the way it is, wackiness is not out of the book yet. Oh, the anything onside can kick upcoming, of yes. course. Yes, with an onside kick, anything can happen at this moment. with Logan Cyber. Lindenwood needs to recover the onside kick. They have Riley Rippert out there, the punter as well. So two kickers. See which direction Tech will take a timeout. I'm sure this is just to go a little bit more over what they've already talked about. Let everyone know the ball's near you, you're just falling on it. You're not trying to run it anywhere. Don't try to run up to it. Let it come to you. I don't I don't I don't know what else you can say to your guys at this point, other than just make make the smart decision, make the right play. Well, the two kickers out there, of course, the punter ripper, Cybert, so there is a slight form of trickery who's actually gonna be the one that kicks it. Lindenwood scored the touchdown, went for two. Didn't get it. And so the kickoff here. The Golden Eagles clinging to a 35-34 lead. Here's Ripper. It'll end up being Cybert. The kick is fielded by Tennessee Tech's Brad Clark. And now the Golden Eagles can have the kneel down. I mean, typically, it's probably one of the least exciting plays when, when that's how it ends. But, I mean, for Brad Clark, that's the play of the game. Your job is to secure the ball. He does just that, high points it. And that's one of those concerning things, too. That ball got pretty far down the field as you watch it again. 
It got the 10 yards. Lindenwood just wasn't able to get anyone downfield quickly enough. Brad Clark high points it, grabs it, runs it out of bounds. And as you said, Dylan, barring just a pure mishandling of a snap here, Golden Eagles are going to walk away with a victory. And again, another Tech took the lead with 6.36 left. Another fourth quarter drive by Jeremiah Oatesfall to put the Golden Eagles in a position to win a ball game. Got the kneel down. Lindenwood can't stop the clock. The officials are talking right now. Tech's starting to make its way out onto the field. That'll do it. <laughs> Not sure what exactly is going on. Yeah, they're, they're on. looking like they're sending the players back Hold to the sideline. And I'm not sure that this game is over. The PA, <laughs> PA announcer's talking like it's over, yeah, but. They're going to put 14 seconds back on the clock. I'm wondering if they never signaled for the snap to originally be made or if okay. it even happened. Now he'll take the kneel down. Now the teams will come out onto the field. Now the ball game is over. Tech wins the thriller, Mike, 35-34. I mean, I don't know if you get a much better scenario on homecoming. You want you want the game to be entertaining. It was definitely that. You you want there to be some scoring. There was a ton of that. Just a great, great football game overall. Big win for the Golden Eagles. Tennessee Tech wins it on homecoming. A thriller like you read about. 35-34, the Golden Eagle final. We well, appreciate you joining us. Great job, all the student workers helping make this production possible. You got Colin Latch on replay, Allison Dahl graphics, Callie Strong directing, Mr. Producer Josiah Jackson. So for Mike Lehman, I'm Dylan Vazano saying so long from Tucker Stadium in Cookville, Tennessee, with the final scores Tennessee Tech 35, Lindenwood 34. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.